Hey, Dom, what's up? Oh, what's up, Nick? Hold on, I'm, I'm sideways, aren't I? Sure, yeah. <laughs> no worries. Hold on. Let me get all straightened out here. I'm a cricket diva today. Hold on. <laughs> no problem. Take your time. Hold on to your love. Hold on to your love, Nick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my uh, gosh. How are you? Look at I, me. Hey, it's, a great, it's a great day. I'm not going to lie. It's... Okay, I done turned you all the way down. This is terrible. Wait a second, Nick. I'll get it, it together, different. I promise. Yes, you, we good. We got time. We got all We're the time good. in the world, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> I don't know if everybody else does, but I'm good. good. <laughs> don't yes! worry about it. Oh, my Woo! eyeshadow. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. It's a lot. <laughs> hey, that's good. A lot I, more I is better. Wipe, I might wipe it off. It looked different in the bathroom. <laughs> You're it funny. Looked in my bathroom, it was like beautiful, and like this light is not cute, so I might wipe it off. Do what you feel, whatever makes you happy. Ooh, it is neon. <laughs> totally different. Okay, on the phone, it is not cute, you guys. Look at that. Well, <laughs> how are you? I'm great. Other than my eyeshadow, I am <laughs> awesome. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Like I said, today's a good. Day. Definitely. 11 7 2020 is definitely going to be a day i feel people are going to remember for a long time for a long time yes yeah. exactly especially yeah. this year because there was so much negative so it's actually one positive thing i feel for once like well you know i look at things differently i see the good in everything and i think that this year having covid was stupid i think it was all made up I think yeah. it was, you know, even the numbers are inflated way too much. So if there is something going on, it's they're making it worse than what it actually is. You oh, hundred percent. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's the politics so, of the world and yes. the stuff that's so corrupt and messed it, up. Exactly. And, but I don't I don't even look at that stuff. It is what it is. So I can't yeah. let that you can't let that take over your Some people lose yeah some people literally lose sleep and they're so there's the one guy one fan was like my my stomach is in knots and i'm like why though we can't we can't fix anything that has happened in politics it's always existed the bullshit that has mm -hmm. happened that's happening now has always happened yep. and every republican president probably felt the same way that trump did for us but they just didn't speak speak it like he did exactly and they didn't show it like he did and, and supposedly mm -hmm. there's some things that happened behind the scenes that he actually did for us but the press didn't want him to come out with that because he was cleaning up some dirty shit behind the scenes that yeah. we don't know of so me me being on the inside of the industry i hear more than the average person yeah and it's a shame if what he was doing was true and could not come out and say it then we are doomed yeah. <laughs> we are doomed because it, he was really cleaning up some dirty crap that for some people that we wouldn't even expect it from just shockingly yeah. um and we'll never know the truth uh unless somebody just really has a, a death wish and they they're going to speak it or reveal something that has happened and mm -hmm. take their lives into their own hands because they won't live through it no that's what, 100 <laughs> i agree with you so much yeah. on everything you just said because people just you know they see the picture painted by the media right and that's it and i know yeah, there's well, two they... sides to every story sometimes a third side that's <laughs> right and the press the media has always told us what to think there's mm -hmm. there's something called um i think it's zeitgeist that my sister sent me years ago her and her husband of how we go through school even elementary school and go through the process of ele uh, elementary school and junior high and um, high school and then you go off to college and you are rewarded based on how you behave like everyone else yeah if you're if you speak up and you ask questions that are against what the teacher is teaching and you're actually sure. asking things that are outside the norm or wait a minute so if they had this then why'd they do that and who's the forefathers of this country that said everything they put all the laws in the place if you're a kid like that in school you might as well hang it up. You're always going to be in the principal's office because you ask questions that are against mm -hmm. what average society thinks is right and wrong. Yeah, and, no, that's so true. Yeah, anytime, I think it was, um, what's her name? Joan of Arc, asking mm -hmm. questions about stuff and speaking up against what they said was right in society at that time. So it's really hard to go against the grain and speak your mind yourself if you don't agree. Like, I was like, what if someone that I put out a post maybe about, I don't know, three weeks, not even three weeks ago, like within the last week. Okay. Bef just before the um, election. So maybe about a, a nine days ago. Okay. Roughly. And it said, um, 
if you vote for Trump, you're still my friend. If you vote for Biden, you're still my friend. Um, if, if you judge people based on what they vote, then maybe you're not my friend. You know, and it was like, I'm, I'm just tired of people getting so angry and bent out of shape if you say something that is against what they feel. 100%. It's your opinion. It's your right. Everyone has the right, so. regardless no one... if you love it or you don't. That's you right. Respect. Like me, I'm not going to lose a friend or a family member over because they think differently. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, they've been fighting, and the Palestinians have been fighting um, wars since the Bible days against each other. You don't agree with my God. You don't, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like religion wars have been going since Jesus was a baby before he was on the planet. So yeah. why are we still fighting about who thinks what? Give a fuck about your opinion. You have the right to think what you want, no matter how yeah. bad they thought this president was. I'm like, what if there's some things that are going, because I was on a reality show. Um, oh, and I try to forget about that, Nick. <laughs> I try to like delete that. You try to delete? <laughs> try hey, to it's delete. all a learning experience. It's all, lear it's all written in your book. <laughs> oh my, well, yes it is. It will be in my book, exactly. Yeah. But um, I don't typically watch reality shows. I think they dummy us down and they, they know Definitely, exactly yeah. how we're going to think when we watch it again. Mm -hmm. They're watching what we watch and they put stuff out even my parents, I tell them all the time, when they're watching TV, if they're watching The Price is Right, yeah. there's certain commercials that come on because they know exactly what type of people watch The Price is Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they get commercials about medicine. There's so many medication, new medication commercials that come on, it's not even funny. And yeah. they're all- it's um, scary. Take, yeah, exactly. Ask your doctor, ask your doctor, ask your doctor, ask your doctor about uh, this. Then you thing. hear the 25 to 30 side effects at the oh end of the commercial. <laughs> The side effects are worse than the disease itself. Exactly. Oh my, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. It's you like that little for... soft voice in the See, background. Exactly. The soft voice, and then they got the little girl playing uh, baseball. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, soccer, throwing the frisbee ball at her dog. Uh -huh. and the grandmother's running along and just watching her little granddaughter while she's taking this evil drug that could kill her. Because some of the side effects are dr death. Yeah. And they, and they say just, it, too. And it's exactly. just like, but they say very nonchalant, where it's like, well, you, and, you could do really good, that. or you may have 50 side effects that are right. not that bad, but yeah, they really but are. They're... Yeah, exactly. The side effects are worse than what you started off with. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. Like, so I try to wake people up to what society drives us to think. They, draw, they drove this election. I had a, a post, but I had so many posts on my phone that uh -huh. I couldn't find it. And, and one, of them, one of them said, um, Biden is the worst president, the worst uh, politician or the worst uh, potential president in the world mm -hmm. vote for me I'm Trump and then the other one said um, uh, Trump is the worst possible candidate for presidency vote for me I'm Biden it's like they're both going to persuade you to think what but we've had so many presidents all these years we've had presidents and what and not one thing including having a black president didn't change anything for us yeah it it's... didn't change and when we were watching the debate like three weeks ago or so whenever it was not even yeah Oh, Biden, um, Trump, I call him Trump and I call Biden blinded, blinded, <laughs> like you're blind, like uh -huh. blind, blinded. <laughs> and, and Trump asked him, he said, but you had eight years. You were in with the, with the president. You were here. Why didn't you make those changes then? How come you yeah. didn't do all the stuff that you're talking about now? And my thing is with, with Trump, Trump, you know, you've been president for eight years, to, uh, for four years as well, but you keep saying, when I become president, I'm going to clean up uh, COVID. I'm going to get rid of COVID and I'm going to make uh, the healthcare system better. And I'm going to do, but you are president now. He was president. So why didn't so he why do Why didn't you do it? Thank you. And that's yeah. the, that's the thing. It's all, they could talk the talk, but then they don't walk the walk when you're, Never. you're ready. Never like you said, you're ready in it or you're about to be and then the four years happen and we're yeah. still at the same spot. The same where... place, the same. Yeah, I yeah. can name 11 presidents since I've been born and old enough to know what a president was. Uh -huh. And all of them make the same exact promises, including um, Hillary. When I will raise, I will raise health care. I will get better health care with the same, with the finger. Mm -hmm. They always do this stupid yeah. shit. <laughs> um, better health care, lower taxes, higher wages. I'm the one for the job. Please. They all they all say the same thing and they yeah. never ever follow through on this. So I'm just like, the one thing that I was relieved about with Trump, if he had anything good to say at all in his crazy foolishness, the whole eight years 
of, sorry, four years he was president is that he kept saying, I am not the typical president. I'm not a politician. Yeah. Um, and so I, I love that about him, but then he wasn't able to do the things that he wanted. And plus he was so arrogant when he comes, he wasn't compassionate either. And that's yeah. the other thing that we need is, is unfortunately, um, a lot of my friends in the UK laugh at us because they're like, we, first of all, when we, um, what do you call it? The prime minister, when they're voting for the prime minister of, mm -hmm. of the UK, they don't look at their relationship and who they slept with before or who they did drugs with before in college. They don't care if you smoke yep. weed, as long as you didn't smoke crack and you still smoke it today, <laughs> you're okay with us. Yeah. They don't care what your religion is. We, we're so, well, they're not Christian. And, you know, they, don't, they had um, discrepancies with women before they got into office. Most men do. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, I don't give a damn about that. What are you going to do while you're in office? Because we, again, we put too much power in the hands of one man to and save then, our like planet. Like you said, though, I love that you said that about the, why do you have to look at someone's history? Like, yes. it doesn't matter. Like, give everyone a damn. has history. Everyone learns from the mistakes or becomes Everybody. a better person. It's not, that's right. like, I don't care. Anyone that's in jail that was in the entertainment industry, I feel bad because their body of work is still magnificent. Exactly. Something, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel, but it's just the way, unfortunately, America is. And well, I get it to a certain degree, but. Exactly. It depends on the artist that goes to jail and what they go for. Yeah. Because in, in R. Kelly's case, he did a lot of stuff to women that should never have happened. It, it's just, it's awful. It's unfortunate. Um, yeah. I saw the, the uh, two seconds of his tape that I could stand stomach with the little girl. I mean, her, her breasts weren't even fully developed. You could tell she was a little girl. Yeah. So the things that he did, I can't look past that. I just can't. It, it, um, it's hard. I guess I, I'd only say that about him because being from Chicago, Yeah. I remember being in high school and hearing stories so much that it kind of just became, I'm not saying this is right, but I just right. thought of it as like normal kind of, because wow. it was not normal in a good way, but like I just heard about it so much that yeah. girls would go out to the house and do things and well, they wanted to get money. They, uh, and the parents, first of all, the parents condoned it. That's what I'm saying. The parents didn't if, care. They wanted the, the money. Girls, and it, well, it's the same thing that they did with, um, what's his name, um, Joe, What's his name? And he went to prison. He just, he died in prison as well. They supposedly killed himself, but I think they-, they Oh, the him. one dude, the, the white guy. The white guy, exactly. Uh, he had um, little girls. They would I, have little the girls island. come to his- Exactly, the island. Yep, dude, yeah. yep. Um, and they would do the same thing. And it's like, I was told by a liaison for En Vogue, I'm sorry, for um, Luther Vandross when he was alive. Um, she, of course, when he was alive, uh, <laughs> but we were on tour with him and she was like, yeah, we used to get little girls for him and we, we kind of knew what he was doing. Um, and we would coax the parents or the mothers to bring their son, like their kids back, like, oh my God, we can meet, you know, uh, yeah. R. Kelly. And it's like, you guys were just as bad as he was. If you are, if you know what's going on and you don't stop that situation from happening, you're just as bad as the person that's doing exactly. it. Exactly. And that's you what- You know what's happening. Yeah, Jeff Epstein, that's someone said. Jeff, Jeff Epstein, Epstein, I said yep. Joe, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but this yeah, you're guy, completely there right. Wasn't like, give us answers. You were so right, because it's, it's a two-way street, but there are a lot of things they did bad that they yeah. are where they are because, you know, his years of, you know, bad things, so. Yeah, it was, it was stupid, right. but they, they use their, their celebrity to coax mm -hmm. little girls or to coax little boys to come backstage. It's like, don't see that kind of evil shit is going to eventually catch up to you. You yeah, can't do wrong. Or later. And, exactly. What's done in the dark comes to light every time. Yeah. A hundred percent. So, but yeah, I want to, you know, I want to dive in. I want to start. I'm not going to get too much. I know you've done a lot of interviews. I'm not going to try to ask. That's all right. You, that's you know, okay. I want to, I want to keep it fresh for you. I don't want to okay, keep it. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? Good. I'm good. So, you know, what's good. Let me just tell you, Nick, uh -huh. what's good about the, um, uh, interviews that I've been doing is that for years I was told by my managers and by handlers as they call them um, you know don't talk about this you'll have your chance you'll get your chance to talk about it and I'm like when is that going to happen I've been gone from in vogue from I left in 97 the first time and then I went back in 2009 yeah. and never got a chance to tell my side of it and all the while because I didn't have the limelight on me um, and vogue was able to tell the story and tell their side of it 
Mm -hmm. Oh, you... Dawn left because she was being a diva. Dawn left because she wanted to go solo and just be a diva. And I'm like, wait a minute, that was never true. Mm -hmm. So I never had a chance to tell my side of it. So I'm loving right now all of the attention and the love that I'm getting. So if you want to ask me, it's good. It's all good. Okay. Well, no, I'm finally you know, I, I want to bring up, well, for, this is my first, okay, I was born in 87. So yeah. I was, I guess, my first single cassette from Your baby. Vogue. Yeah, baby well, Nick. I'm a, I know I don't feel like I anymore, but I guess I am. <laughs> but my baby. first single cassette I bought at Coconuts was oh, Don't Let Go. Wow. Love. And I remember being so mad because, like you said, that's before social media. And you just read the press and, like, you know, Don yeah. left. And I was like, what? Like, and you, <laughs> you, when I think about it, when I seen the Don't Let Go video, mm -hmm. you were the first person to see in the video because you opened right. the song. You have the yes. first verse well so, i sing like, both verses i sing yeah, both yeah yeah that's what i'm saying like you were right i remember like you were the focal point in the beginning of the like you were the video exactly and Thank i you. remember yeah. like because that came out what uh end of 96. yes so exactly. i was i was i just turned nine years old and that's well, when i started getting into music <laughs> I, <laughs> I know right oh my god did he just but say i was nine? a young like i was a music head at a young did he age just say nine? he said nine he said he's not <laughs> he, you guys he said he's nine years old cindy cindy terry maxine that's us you guys he, he was nine years old <laughs> wow nick yeah but i remember the cover and everything because it was it wasn't a cover with your pictures on it it was just like orange green and pink it was like oh, wow. a art it was like artistic. It, it, yeah, exactly. It was, it was graphics. graphics. It wasn't a picture of you all. And yes. I remember buying it and I was like, oh my God. And that's when I first got into because I was old enough to actually know. Like I remember right. hearing songs from Funky Divas on the radio, but I was too young to really know yet, I guess. Yeah, you weren't interested yet enough. Yeah, exactly. Right. And then I started sure. getting into music and knowing and researching and buying my cassettes and exactly. buying my CDs. And like I was so mad. I was like, Juan, where? Because then ev3 came out and i was like hold on i was like what <laughs> what's going on i was like right where's she at the girl, whatever the yeah girl? whatever came out i'm like where's the one girl like the one exactly. girl exactly really the like, girl oh, yeah i was Nick. like and it's so crazy but i, I want i guess we'll jump from right there like recording the video for don't uh -huh. let go was it tension already was it like was it bad or was, was it it was bad for me because um, just before we did that video, we were at the studio, we, we, actually when we were recording Don't Let Go. Uh -huh. Okay. And I'm still not gonna blast this person out, but I was told, they were like, okay, you gotta come out to the parking lot before the girl. But so, because I did lead, I was singing lead on all the songs. I was gonna do all those little parts, can't keep running in and out of my life, Cindy's part. I was gonna do, um, Running in and out with Maxine's part. I was going to do Terry's little part. Everything was going to be all me. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to see what song I can tell you. Just like giving him something to feel. I sang lead on the whole thing. Yeah. They were going to have me sing lead on all of Don't Let Go. Just the background parts were going to be involved like we typically do. Yeah. <clears throat> and the somebody told me. Uh, you girl, you got to come back. Stay. You got to come outside with me to the parking lot. And we were at the plant. The record plant in Los Angeles is one of the biggest um, uh, pro uh, studios in okay. Los Angeles. Like everybody from Aerosmith to Jesus has yeah. done a song there, right? <laughs> Michael Jackson, like everybody has, has recorded there. So um, I was like, you got, the, the girls are going to be here and I got to finish this part. I want to put, I want to add some little ad libs in the, in the end. And they were like, no. Pull, put because I had uh, something in my I want to say tea or whatever. Put that down. Come outside right now. And I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't even grab my jacket, but it was kind of cold outside. I was like, uh -huh. what is up? And they said, okay, don't say it came from me. But you are getting ready to get kicked out of the group. They don't want you to sing lead on the song. Everything in my body shut down because. On one hand, you're thinking, okay, you don't know what you're talking about. But then I'm like, wait a minute, how do you know that? What are you saying? Who said, where did you hear that from? You know? And yeah. so I was outdone. I was, I was numb and I was like, wow. So how do you know? And they said, um, I was told this, uh, they, 
let me know directly that you're not supposed to sing lead on the entire song. We're gonna take so we're gonna take you off the first verse. We're gonna give you the first half. So I have to tell myself that we should be mm -hmm. that part right there. We're gonna just let you go do that yourself, and then we're gonna give the second half of that same video uh, verse to one of the other girls. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the second verse and let. Terry and Cindy or Cindy and Maxine or whoever split the second verse. So you mm -hmm. and someone else on the first verse and Cindy and Terry or whoever on the second verse. And they said, I said, they said, but watch what happens when they get here. Don't get upset. I was like, yeah, I'm crying. Like, what well, are you yeah, telling that's, me? This is a big deal. I mean, that's a lot to take in. That's right. Um, and the reason that that happened is because I slighted the record company. They mm -hmm. offered me a, a solo, they offered Terry a solo record deal. She did her album first. Mm -hmm. And because I did mine and I took them seriously about my solo album and, and held them accountable for that solo album, they didn't like it. I mm -hmm. outsmarted the record company and they were pissed <laughs> off. So they were like, okay, how can we fuck Dawn up the most? We're going to take her off the lead because we, we know that we're going to kick her out of the group. So we don't want her to sing lead on the big, on this hit, if, on this song yeah. in case, in case it's a hit. Since she's leaving, we want to leave on a, a very quiet, we don't care about Dawn note. And so that's mm -hmm. what they try to do. So when the girls got there, Nick, I had to act like, when they walked in the door, I had to be like, hey, Cindy, what's up? Max, what's, what's going on? Terry, how are you? Like I had to act like everybody was, everything was cool. Like Don't nothing. show any emotion. And I had to suck it up, knowing that those girls did not want me in the group anymore. So they get in the studio and they tried to sing my verse. And it was nothing, it was nothing close. Now, what they did was because they didn't know how to match my voice to who, who sang lead for Maxine and I, or Cindy and I on the first verse, I forgot. It's you and... No, 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 it's me by myself now, but in the yeah. studio that day, it, they oh, had okay. to let them, let them try but... their hand at it. So everybody got a chance to sing the verses. And okay. basically, bottom line, it was terrible. <laughs> they couldn't do it. They yeah. couldn't do it. And it I is mean, what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm not gloating, but you know, you guys tried to kick me out. So God don't like ugly. That's like so shitty. And mm -hmm. you tried to kick me out for the most ridiculous reason. Like I, I always say, a lot of times artists can be on drugs. Artists can be thieves. Artists can like R. Kelly doing stuff with children or crazy stuff like that. That mm -hmm. you'd be like, okay, this is not a good look on. The rest of us because your reputation for what you're doing to whatever or doing drugs and all that stuff is going to mess up the rest of us yeah and we can't have this so we got to get you out of the group it was none of that yeah because so, that's usually the thing like you said that's always... exactly yeah so to this day it, it bothers me because but it didn't work and that's what i'm like okay god does not like ugly and can't stand the pretty as they say and you know, they just tried to do some dirt that really backfired on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. It did. Right. it did. It was the wrong timing, too. It's like, if you're going to kick somebody out, kick them out when they're not singing the lead on the biggest hit that you have. Like, yeah. Still like to this said, day, it's one of the biggest. It is the biggest. That song is timeless. It's the that, biggest hit. It's, a, it's, yeah. the, it's not the only hit, but it is the biggest. So Don't mm -hmm. Let Go was first. I think Hold On was second. Um, Free Your Mind was third. Lies charted, but not as high as the rest. Uh, okay. You don't have to worry. Didn't chart as high as the rest. Uh, giving them something. We have like five major hits. So giving mm -hmm. them something. Um, never going to get it. Uh, hold on. Free your mind and don't let go. Oh, yeah. You know? So you don't kick out the person that's seeing lead on the biggest hit. That just made no sense. It made no well, sense. Well, yeah, that's what I asked you too. Because it was supposed to be called EV4, right? It was actually going to be, you don't name the album until after you're done with the music. But basically, mm -hmm. yeah, the, we were talking about give, uh, I mean, uh, EV4. Um, we were throwing it around. So with other yeah. names. But yeah, it should have been EV4. And so since I was out of the group, they named it EV3. That's great. You know what? It's so funny. I was looking, because I remember here, I remember I found it some way, but then it was taken off of YouTube. But uh, like, original version of whatever with your mm -hmm. verse on it and there's a yes. remix version on youtube still but really uh-huh yeah there's one with it says like dawn's original version and but it's a remix oh. it's like a club a club mix oh and my God, i was like i would love to hear that i'll send you that the link makes... after i'll definitely send you the link but it was yes. so good like how much did you record 
for that album? Like, was it mostly? I recorded dunk? everything, everything except uh, what what album was Riddle on? Riddle. That was Masterpiece Theater. So okay, I didn't do that. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I think there were two more songs that we had. Um, we were supposed to have a creative meeting because there were two more songs that we had to record for the record. So it was almost done. Okay. And um, I know I'm on Right Direction because I can hear it. I cry every time I listen to that album. I can't listen to Right Direction. I can't listen to whatever. You can even hear me in the background. Like I have some little parts in, um, in the breakdown part. Um, and I can't hear it in my head to know the song that much, but you can hear me. And uh -huh. when I saw, when I met with, um, my ex-husband knew Babyface really well. He used to write for all, he used to write for a lot of different artists through Babyface's label. And we yeah. went there one day and um, Kenny was, com Babyface was coming out of the parking lot and he passed us and he was, he backed up and he's like, hey, what's up? He called my husband's name and he said, Dawn, oh my God. And he got out of his car and I got out and ran around the passenger side to his driver's side. And he said, man, he said, it was very difficult for me to take you off the lead, uh, off, take your parts off the song. He said, so quiet is kept. I got you still in there. I got you pulled back in the cut. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, but that means I'm not getting paid. Hold on now. Wait. wait yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> And he's like, he's like, I probably got myself in trouble. But yeah, he said it was very difficult because <sighs> any one of us in a group situation, when you've been known for as long as we were and impacted the world the way we did, yeah. taking any one of our voices off changes the whole dynamic. Mm -hmm. So you got the person that's saying lead on the biggest hit and you're getting ready to destroy, get her out of here because you didn't like what she did. Like Terry did a solo album too. She yeah. did the exact same thing just before me. I followed suit, as they say. I followed her to do a solo album. Yeah. So why is it that you're keeping Terry and you're kicking me out? What is the difference? And, and when we were in a meeting together, that last meeting that we had, Terry was like, um, I said, what's different about that? And Terry said, it just is, Dawn. It just is. And I was like, oh, wow. So not what, what's good for the goose is good for the gannet because she's not a man. But, you know, what? so... What do you call it when it's two sides to what is it's one sided? It's one sided, um, yeah. It, it, it's very one sided, yeah. But there's a word. It's not fair a, at all because not at all. Oh no, not even close. Um, it's so crazy. So, like, it hey, just, Sean. It just blows hey, my mind. Like, me too, Nick. It, it was ridiculous because we had such an amazing group. We were just getting started, yeah. and everybody around us. Well, I should say we weren't just getting started, but we should have had a lot more than what we did. And because I started asking questions and bringing up things like, hey, I don't know. We have, oh, 20 million records sold now. Maybe we should start making money. Yeah. Because everyone knows that be... first album, you don't make that much because you got to get your feet wet and figure it out, I feel. Exactly. A lot of people bite the bullet just Which to get. Which is crazy, too, because you did all the work. You still did the work just because mm -hmm. it's a first time um platinum or multi-platinum situation or your brand new group coming out doesn't mean that you shouldn't get paid yeah you that's should. Like saying, exactly yeah. yeah that's like saying you start a new job and you don't get paid for that first two weeks that you're at work like what no. <laughs> wait 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 hold hold, hold up <laughs> i just don't understand that and i remember being on i did a play um called love makes things happen Okay. And Babyface, again, we're talking about Babyface. He did all the music. So Love Makes Things Happen is a song between him and Pebbles. Okay. So that's what the premise of the um, play was about, me and another guy. I was a leading lady. And Coco was on the play with us as well. And she, um, after I got comfortable with her, maybe, because we would travel together. So me, mm -hmm. her, her, me, and Kevon Edmonds from After Seven, which is Babyface's brother, um, would travel uh, with a few more people as well, but we would travel together from city to city. And at the airport, I started seeing her luggage and I was like, wait a minute. She has Louis Vuitton, like every single piece from the smallest little wallet to like this big, huge trunk. And she's got every single piece, like every single time we get to any city, she's wearing fur coats and, and fur stoles around her neck. And, and she has, uh, you know, Every time we get into a major city, not the, the smaller cities, but the major cities like Chicago, Philadelphia, yeah. New York, um, Los Angeles, she would rent like a BMW or a Range Rover 
And I'm just like, girl, okay. So after I felt comfortable enough, I asked her, I finally asked her, I said, Coco, we were backstage because before the show started, we would have to walk through this fake turnstile, like, like one of those revolving doors yeah. and introduce ourselves. And because I was the last one, I'm the leading lady, I would go last. Uh -huh. And this is before the show started. So we all have our coats on, like we're outside and we look at the audience and we wave and Dawn Robinson, they, they'd say our names and, um, and then we would bow and then I would leave and mm -hmm. come back and get ready for the next scene. Uh, and I asked her, I said, Coco, it was, it was just me, her and, um, Raphael, <laughs> Coco, <laughs> me and, and Kevon. And I said, Coco, can I ask you a personal question? She said, yeah, of course. I said, when you guys were in your group, like SWV, did you make money? Uh -huh. I said, I know it's a weird question. I'm sorry. She said, no, but what do you mean? So overall, and I said, well, yeah. Like, did you guys make money when you did your first album? I'm so mm -hmm. into you. I think it was your first hit. Did you guys make money? And she said, Dawn, not only did we make money, but we were rich off of our first album. If we didn't have to record again, we would have been rich off that first album. Um, it's About Time, I think is the name of it. Yeah. And I sat there, Nick, and I swear to you, I was out of body. Kevon came, because she had to go out and introduce herself. Introduce her, okay. She was next up. And so she went out, and I could hear the audience clapping, but I was like, lights on, nobody home. I was out of body. And I said to Kevon, he said, Dawn, I understand. He put his hand on my shoulder. He said, my brother's baby face, and we got issues as well. And I was like, you know, Kevon, it's not that SWV shouldn't have had it. Of course those girls deserve it. Yeah. They have hits. But it's like we worked so hard, and we were the first to get on the scene. I said, you were the blueprint. You were... We were the blueprint for it. And I'm just saying, yeah. pay us the same way. Treat us the same respectful way. And Oh, and I asked her before she went out. I'm sorry, no, she came backstage. I had changed my clothes for the next scene because I wasn't in the first scene, uh -huh. but I was in the next one. And I'm sorry, yes, I was. Yes, I was. I did my scene and I came back, changed my clothes for the next scene and I asked her, I had to find her backstage. Where are you? Because it was dark. <laughs> and I said, so, I said, so Coco, what kind of man, like what, how, how did you guys get rich off your first album? She said, because we had an amazing manager. We had a female and she was a beast. She didn't say beast because back then that wasn't a word. Uh -huh. that we would use for that term. But she, yeah. said, no, she was like a, a go-getter. And she made sure that if she knew that if we didn't get paid, she didn't get paid. Yeah, and that's how it's supposed sure. to be. Yeah. Yes, with management, it's supposed to be that way. If you don't get paid, if you don't make sure your artist gets paid, you don't get paid. Mm -hmm. But you're working for them. It makes that's complete right. sense. That's right. And if your artists are not happy, they're going to leave. And I was the only one that was smart enough to leave. It took me eight years, but I still left the group. So... Yeah, but when she said that, I was like, so you had an, what is her name? <laughs> What's your manager's name? I need to talk to her. Like, she sounds amazing. Because she made sure her artists were taken care of. And that is the biggest thing. It's like, there's so much money to be made. But if your artist, if, if a regular nine to five um, type of job situation mm -hmm. is not good, then the people are going to fight. They're going to be angry. Yep. They're going to have the union speaking on their behalf. They're going to strike. I've done it multiple it. times. <laughs> a lot of times. Have you? Wow. So you know what I'm saying? I, I've like, gone to other jobs to get a offer letter and bring it to my current employer and said, hey, don't see? match this. Exactly. I'm leaving. And then they would That's match right. it. And it was a done deal. So, Good for you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, Nick. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I wish you were our, You should have been our manager, Nick. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> you should have been our manager. <laughs> oh, my God. Because... It just makes no sense for such a beautiful group. And, you know, I could say that they're beautiful women as well. Um, I don't like that they did what they did. To me, it was sneaky. It was offhanded. Mm -hmm. It was unnecessary. And again, literally, Terry did her Southern Gal album came out before mine. And the record company oh. came to me and asked me if after she was when she was just about to go on tour. Dawn, by the way, do you want to do a solo album too? And I was like, heck yeah. I took that deal because... First of all, Cindy and Maxine couldn't make up their mind. So I was like, I'm going to lose my house. I can't, you know, yeah. keep waiting. And also, what was the other reason? Well, they were riding the fence and... Um, you were at the peak, it was too. I, about the I money. remember you, you were like, you were the member to me that I remember was like at the top. I feel like you were, I'm not saying you were 100% all the time, but for I that point, yeah. you were like, I remember always seeing you in the front. So right, like, right. It would make sense for an album because a lot of artists do that. Yeah. You know, well, groups, they, a, do, a lot of... they do. You're right, Nick. But 
it wasn't time yet. It wasn't, I mean, we had done three albums, but really the third album was just a, what they call an EP. So instead of having 11 or 12 songs on there, it'll have six or seven songs mm -hmm. at the most. So that's an EP, it's just a short, yeah. and it was mostly remix of other songs or remixes of other song, Remix to Sing, I think it was called. Um, and it had Runaway Love, which was the only new song on there. So we yeah. really didn't do a new album per se. It, it wasn't time for me to do a solo record yet. And it wasn't time for Terry. Terry should have done that. But yeah. they were divide and conquer. They knew what they were doing. And mm -hmm. they knew that with Terry in the studio, it was going to put us at odds with each other. And we're going to sit around for a while. And then we're going to be like, OK, we're going to disband pretty much and fall apart because we're not happy with what's going on with Terry. She's over there doing her own thing. And, and yeah. yet they kicked me out for doing that exact same. in fact i didn't even get as far as terry terry got all this she had a video she had a single out she had tour uh support she went on a tour you know and i didn't even get that far i was still recording my album when the when the record company came to me and said hey we're not really serious about your album we're gonna go ahead and just cut you right now and uh we'll come back to you later but um right now we got to do an en vogue album and i was like to hell you will no, that's crazy. It, you you put me in a position where you told me that I could do a solo album. So you're going to take that seriously. You're going to do my solo album. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the one you fucked with the wrong one. Yeah. Hey, there's hey, you got to stand that's your ground because you that's get it. And at that point, people, so many people let people step on them, I feel because they wanted to stay quiet because that was kind of like the thing I feel back in that time. Right. So many right. different artists I've heard like well, you didn't speak on it. You just kind of dealt with it. If you didn't yeah. get money or didn't. You didn't want to be on the bad, you know, the bad side of things. You want to always look the bad. It's it just so, it, it would be, I feel so different if social media was around. Right. Like, Me too. Me too. I could have spoken out a lot more, but I didn't have the power of the press in my corner mm -hmm. the way the other girls did, like I said. So I wasn't able to defend myself and say exactly what happened and, um, and really call them out for that shit was, it was faulty. It was just so faulty. There is no yeah. way that you can look at what they did to me and what they didn't do to Terry and say that anything is fair about that. Yeah, I don't- It's just not right. I, I still to this day, like, oh my God, you guys were so, I was such a threat, I guess, to the record company, to Terry. Um, I don't know why Maxine and Cindy, Maxine has told me before, like, she's like, well, you know, we were afraid because, I mean, they had all the power and the record company had all the power. I'm like, no, the four of us are the ones with the you power. You the power. Thank yeah, you. You, yeah. <laughs> you make, if you all, you all leave, they don't have nothing. You... Well, that's what we were supposed to do. Before Terry went in to do her solo album, we were supposed to stand down. Yeah. We were supposed to not go into the studio and record another freaking note because we've done three albums now. Born to Sing, Funky Divas, Runaway Love album, whatever that was called, uh, Remix to Sing. And mm -hmm. we have not gotten paid the way we deserve. We're only still getting two pennies a record. So we need to stand down. And we agreed, okay, Cindy, Terry, Maxine, Dawn, we're not, we're, we're all in agreement here. Everybody was like, yes, 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 and yes, yes. We're not going in the studio. And Terry ended up going into the studio and staying there because her man was Denny. She was sleeping with our manager. So instead of keeping her relationship with him separately, they she were, had his back. It. Mm -hmm. She had his back and she didn't have our back. Yeah, because so. that's like, I remember like TLC, they barged into the record label and that's right. Got what they wanted because That's like right. you're in the same predicament, kind of. And you hear so much, and it's so unfortunate because, like you said, from me being a fan looking in, I'm thinking, "Oh my God!" Like it's they're crazy. one of the biggest, you know, female groups of all time, and right. get the biggest right. hits. It, it just blows my mind how much of the back end that we just never seen, and it was just like, yeah, you just brush it under the rug, and it is what it is, and it's exactly. so it's crazy. Like, well, you know, some good things I want to ask you too, like yeah. for going on tour when you first for Born to Sing and for Funky Divas, how were those tours? Because I wish oh I God. could have seen you all at that time. Cause that was, that's when, I don't know, the industry was just the best I feel and just fun to see people yeah. live, I feel. Well, I don't know how it was in the sixties and I don't know how it was in the seventies and eighties. Um, I know we saw a lot of artists, but we don't, I don't know if, I mean, we're hearing the stories now and unsung, unsung yeah. and shows like that, uh, that a lot of the artists were not paid 
back in the 60s that, of course, Barry Gordy, Barry Gordy was um, ripping everybody off, you know, and yeah. buying him a Cadillac and a house. Well, no, let me buy my own Cadillac and my <laughs> own house, and I will dictate what I do with my money. How about that? You're not going to yep. buy me a freaking Cadillac. But, um, you know, unfortunately, we hear it more with R&B artists than we do with rock artists or we do with country artists um but you were asking oh, how things were back then and it was amazing yeah how were the tours like because those are big because you toured in what 91 and 93 exactly 91 yeah. well we toured in 90 we toured the same year we came out you did okay. um yeah so we did a, a promo tour just to introduce the world to us and mm -hmm. i have such a funny story we were at we were we had our only hit which was hold on and we would do that hit everywhere Nick, yeah. we did it <laughs> And so we were overseas. We did it over there. It was a hold on to your love. You hold on to your And don't waste your time fighting life. We did it everywhere, right? Oh, uh -huh. hold on. We were sleepy. <laughs> hold on to your love. And hold on to your love. We were just tired. So we went to, um, we were in Miami. And we went to a club called Strawberries. Okay. <laughs> This was Luke Skywalker's club. <laughs> oh, my oh my God. Oh my God. There was a song that was on and the club was jumping. It was like, oh my God. So we only had one outfit, right? And our uh -huh. outfit was, I call them the, the um, it looked like we were working for United Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. The, the skirt I had. Well, did I wear a skirt? I think I had on like shorts that were to my knees or something, like gauchos or something. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. And Good old gauchos. Gaucho. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> I remember the gauchos. Yeah, gauchos those were, were terrible. Huge. I hated, hated gauchos. <laughs> hated them. And no, maybe I had pants all the way to the floor. And Maxine had on the gauchos. Terry had on a A line, A line dress, which actually looked like an like an airline stewardess. Cindy had on a skirt and a top, and we looked like we could just like we were in the military. It was terrible, right? So we had. Any city we would get to, we would have to go the next day and have those outfits clean because they were just like, oh, yeah. oh, it was terrible. <laughs> we were so nervous. And the material was just like funky. Okay, funky divas for real. But before we were funky divas. So uh -huh. we were just funky. So um, we were at Strawberries. And we, could, we uh -huh. walked into the club. You walk through the back door. You usually don't come through because nobody knew us yet. So it wasn't like the club was empty and we had a sound check and all that stuff. The club was on fire when i tell you everybody be like yeah it was yeah. the song that was playing nick was um 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 uh bitch suck my dick bitch <laughs> bitch suck my dick right uh -huh. nigga eat my boo <laughs> nigga eat my boo you know what i mean the word and yeah yeah so we were like what is going on <laughs> oh my god you guys are gonna take the song off now and let us perform oh my god we were like, please don't do it. So the next song came on. It was just as bad as that. And the next song, they were like, you got, ladies, we have to do this at this point. We got to cut the song off in the middle of everybody out on the dance floor dancing. We were backstage, so there was a curtain. They couldn't uh -huh. see us. We were like, if you do this right now, they're going to kill us. <laughs> they ruined the vibe, yeah. Exactly. The, 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 when the song stopped, we could hear them. And they were like, what the fuck? Don't <laughs> turn off my song. That's my jam. That's my shit. What the fuck? <laughs> We were like, oh, my God. And we're standing backstage in our poses, and we're posing. And we're doing our thing, and we're, like, posing uh -huh. like we usually do. And we can, and the curtains opened up, and we were like, oh. <laughs> and they were like, who is that? Who the fuck is that? Who is this shit? Oh, we were like, oh, my God. And we were like, hurry up and start the music. And Terry is supposed to start the song, so we forgot. So uh -huh. we're standing there, and we're standing there, and we're standing there. And I said, and Terry started, and oh, because she didn't know the key. She never knew the key. The song was in, oh my God, that is such one of those stories where I'm glad they didn't start throwing tomatoes at us and glasses and bottles. And, oh, that's OMG. crazy. It was I know what you're saying, though, because I know exactly what you're talking about when it's a different vibe and then they have a live out of nowhere, <laughs> someone live, and it's like, what? <laughs> that's, my like, that's your jam exactly yeah, you want a, it to go off exactly yeah, that's that's so everything. Funny. but but we did so good that they were like do it again 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 so and we did it twice it. and then they were like do it again we were like, <laughs> <"Win."> <laughs> you know we had to sing it again but you, you, you. 
da, 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 da. you know it was like that we we redeemed ourselves but it was yeah. rough oh my god so because so we didn't have crazy. any other hits we had no other songs to do we had to do hold on three times uh-huh or they were gonna tear us to shreds you know <laughs> Heck, that's yeah. so funny it well, was rough <laughs> you know the, the good times too like also you know it's so crazy i don't know if you ever heard this before but i've always mm -hmm. thought this i'm like i wish they would have worked together somehow when i seen Who? the free your mind video yes I'm and i move. seen the bodyguard queen of the night performance yes. i oh, thought wow. i was like yo that could be like a remix somehow wow. it just felt the two vibes were not saying exactly the same but yeah, i felt but kind was. of the same energy yes like did did you ever think that or like hear that from anyone because i i don't well, know why i always thought that. i know that um black cat was like for your mind sorry mm -hmm. um black <laughs> cat was like for your mind and so was um uh what's it called um black cat was like for your mind and so was queen of the night yeah I yeah. got the stuff that you want. Uh -huh. I got the things that you need. Yeah. And just was, the whole was... aura of the videos, too. Like, you said, like, wow. black on and I think, like, you know, the uh, stain, uh, like, steel things on and, like, silver yeah, and black. Had, and that's um, what Whitney Wendy had was, on, too. Whitney was trying to be a little more rock and roll, I guess, in that, yeah. in that video. A little more edgy. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And but I look I back on it. It was right, like, I think... Free Your Mind was released in like September of 90, 91. And mm -hmm. then like Queen of the Night was released as a single like October 91. So it's crazy. It was within a month. Like Dirty just... Diana, exactly, Alana. Um, I got to see that video again, Queen of the Night, because I did just hear the song, but I can't remember the video visually. Yeah. As just much. Like... So did you ever I'm like not... talk with Whitney or did you ever... Do I have a story? Do I got a story? I got a story. <laughs> we were at the Byron Allen show for the first time, right? We, we walked in the door. And when you walk into a studio, typically, if they're recording, they have a red light outside on the, mm -hmm. on the before you yep. walk in the door. But we walked in, and everybody turned to us and was like, shh, because we walked in laughing and making noise. We didn't know. And um, we looked over to our left, and Whitney was standing right there, and her friend Robin, her friend Robin, yeah. and um, <laughs> I, I wish she could have lived her own life and just li did it her way. Yeah. But Robin was her girl. That was her girl. Mm -hmm. And she made her happy. So, um, but, so we walked in and everybody was telling us to be quiet and um, Whitney was like, I love y'all. I love y'all. We were like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's Whitney. You know what I mean? So yeah. when, when they said cut and everybody could talk, she was like, oh my God. She ran over to us and was hugging us to death, and we were choking. And we loved her, and we told her that. And so um, she left out, and we were talking to the producer was telling us when we were going to shoot and what time to come back. And mm -hmm. um, we got to go to the groom, green room. We're going to show you where to get dressed and all that stuff. And I said, Terry, go with me. I want to ask Whitney, um, her voice teacher, who uh -huh. her voice teacher is, like if she has a voice coach. So me and Terry ran out the doors and we were like, I, the door slammed behind us. I was like, I hope we didn't get locked out. Um, <laughs> and then we ran over to the parking lot and we saw her, her, uh, her, her limousine. And okay. it was one of those stretch limousines. And, and uh -huh. we ran over to her and we knocked on the window and Robin, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. We knocked on the car because the door was open. Well, we knocked just to let them know we're walking up to you. And Robin yeah. stuck her head out and was like, she put her hands on the door like this, like, what do y'all want? What do y'all want? <laughs> and I said, oh, um, I, I mean, I just want to ask Whitney a question. And Whitney was like, it's OK, honey. It's all right. <laughs> let, let, him, let him come in. And we didn't get in, but we stuck our heads in the door. And I said, Whitney, I just wanted to know um, who you have, you know, who you take lessons with. And she said, oh, honey, God is my vocal coach. What? She said, "Y'all is my vocal coach, but um, I think we, I think Anita Baker has a voice teacher, so you need to call her." And act. I was like, "That is so much shade, Whitney. So much shade, Whitney Houston. You know better. <laughs> you know better because that is awesome. It was, like saying, it was like saying I don't need one. Oh, but Anita yeah. has one. Like, how do you know that? How do you know? <laughs> Don't be messy. Don't be messy. Oh, Whitney. That's Whitney. That is so Whitney. Yeah, I'll never forget that. But Robin was like, what's your, I mean, like you were bodyguard. Yeah, we were just, yeah, like we're bodyguard. 
Real deal. Yeah. Well, I'm like, okay, we're, we're celebrities too now. Don't, don't get yeah. it twisted. <laughs> You know? That yeah. is so crazy. Well, you know, another thing I want to talk about, um, I actually talked to her earlier today, told her I was interviewing you. And she's like, oh, my God, tell her I said hi. Um, when you did Firm Biz with Foxy and Nas, I, yes! I'm friends with Foxy, and she told me to tell you hello. Oh, my and gosh, Nick, you did another. Wow, you're doing great. Great job for you. I yeah, love her. I never got to meet Inga. I never got to meet that little pretty girl. Um, never got to meet her. I met Nas. He was the only one there that day. I think AZ was out of town because he had already filmed his parts. Okay. And um, and Inga was giving him the blues. She didn't want to come to the video shoot. They had to go to her apartment and get her. And she didn't want to come that day. And then uh, Princess Diana ended up dying the same day. So the parts, mm -hmm. the parts were. There's a lot were, going on. We, yeah, it was a lot happening. And um, uh, the part that I do when I, I'm on the pole, I did in Los Angeles. And then okay. the parts that I do when I am walking down the steps and doing all the yep. choreography with the dancers, mm -hmm. I did at that the in, end, New York. Right? in New York. Yeah, yep. exactly. At the end. Right. right. Yeah, because I was so happy when I seen that. I was like, Don's back. I was oh like, my yes. God. Like, I remember, oh. like, see, I was like, oh, snap, like the firm and now Don's in it. I was like, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> at first I was still young. I didn't know. I was like, hold on, is Don like a part of this rap group i was like oh this is <laughs> oh awesome if it is and then i wow. and i was like oh it's not i was like but still i was happy that it was happening exactly but, yeah well, thank like, you so much yeah um, how was that though like being in a different you know element yeah just yeah it was different it was um you know i didn't really get to meet everybody like i said and it was only mm -hmm. that one song yeah you know what I mean? So I wasn't really, I think with Dr. Dre and I, because I, he wanted me to sign to him, but um, his label was too new and I didn't want to take that chance. And my manager suggested that I sign to Interscope through Aftermath. Through Aftermath. As opposed okay. to directly, as opposed, yeah. Um, so I really, I was admiring the fact that like one day I was at the studio and there was so much smoke I couldn't see. <laughs> Snoop Dogg had come through and he was like, I was like, okay, I know he's here because I can hear him, <laughs> but, but I can't see him. I was that much smoke and I couldn't handle it anymore. But I watched him listen to the track a couple of times. He got a pen and piece of paper after he zooted a little bit. And then he wrote what he had to say, went in the studio, laid, laid it down and left. And I was like, okay, I don't work that fast. <laughs> so... Dr. Dre and I really didn't get to work like we wanted to because I just wasn't used to his process and he wasn't used to mine. Yeah. Um, but I recorded a lot of other songs while I was with him on his dime, like I, I, his studio, uh, Record One mm -hmm. in, in uh, the Valley in Los Angeles. Um, a song called uh, Damn You Owe Me, Damn You Owe Me, um, by a guy named Gypsy, a producer named Gypsy. and. Oh uh, a few other songs, uh, Cy Smith, I did some stuff with Cy Smith and okay. never came out. Nothing ever came out, but we, you know, we, it was amicable, the walk away when we mm. walked away from one another, it was amicable because he said, you know, you've been waiting for me and he was doing too much. He was doing, um, he was working on the, uh, Slim Shady album, the first album. The first or album. Say, what is Eminem's first? That's Slim Shady, right? The Slim, yeah, Marshall Mathers. Slim Shady is on the Slim uh -huh. Shady, yes, yep. Um, please stand up. Please stand up. <laughs> that was a jam. He was working on that, and it was. And yeah. um, he was doing King T, this other rapper. So he was much more comfortable with that element of production than he was with R&B. That's so interesting. So, yeah, like, it, it sucks, too, because like, like you said, the, I've heard from so many artists how uh -huh. their stuff we'll never hear that's just in the vault. Or exactly. Who I know. knows where it's sad, and it's like, dang, like, because today I feel like so many songs leak because you have computers and people just, you know, leaking stuff randomly. <laughs> where at that time, I feel like it was rare. Oh, no. They leaked a lot back then. They would, if yeah. anything got leaked, we knew it was because of the engineer at the studio. Because they were the ones with the copies of everything. They were the ones who would sit in the studio while everybody else went home. And they were with those songs. And <laughs> but they were hard copies. to get a hold of. They were, like, you had to hear it. I don't know. I guess. Yeah, you're right. Like, it was you know what I'm saying? Like, now you just go on YouTube and type in you know, Don Robinson unreleased songs. New, exactly. If it was new and they would pop up if they were leaked right. somehow. It's like, dang, it just sucks the labels and publishing it all owned and Yeah, well, you, you know, they found a way to do it anyway, and especially with um with selling bootleg. 
You yeah. know, that has always Absolutely. existed. Exactly. <laughs> it always has. has always, so With a little piece of paper in the front. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Homemade. Um, but that was a way for us to get our stuff out there in the streets. And I didn't mind that. I knew that they had to make the people on the street selling our music had to make, had to hustle too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they were the ones <laughs> to kind of put our music out there to let everybody know this is the hottest, latest. So yeah. it was kind of like having a street team. <laughs> But we Unofficial didn't get paid. street team. <laughs> exactly. But we didn't get paid from it, so it had to stop. But yeah, I mean, um, Dr. Dre and I walked away amicably. I just wish, I wonder how that project would have gone. Yeah. Had we just, finished. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. yeah, it's just. Well, you know, yeah. I want to talk about too uh -huh. when he released Dawn. Ah! Okay. Oh my gosh! So, oh Dawn, my God. you know, you had wow. Envious, and I loved Envious video. Yes, do you? I loved how it was, because I thought it was different. Right, like with the really? people, how you were climbing up the guys with the suits, and then you fell back, and everyone that, caught well, you. Okay, Nick, the falling uh -huh. back part is the part that I was like, really, you like that? Because it was so, it was supposed to be, to so the point of me climbing up the guys, there were real men standing there, and I had to climb the corporate ladder, Yeah, what it was. <laughs> right, did uh -huh. you catch that? I have. So, um... And one of the guys was like, oh, you can step on my shoulder. And he was an old man. And I was like, ah! <laughs> because it was, I, I had on high heel boots and I was trying not to dig my heel into his shoulder. But yeah. Um, so when I fall back, that's really kind of chintzy and it looks really ghetto. Like it looks, you could tell it's just no, no, it's like OGI instead of CGI <laughs> or MCI. It's just, it's not what it was supposed to be. And um so but i love that song i love the last scene when i when they pick me up over their shoulders and they're uh, holding me on the dance floor that's really yeah. cool but i didn't have a budget so well you didn't make it look like that because it looks fun exactly no the, it the, was um, well done like for whatever budget you had you oh made my it God. i remember you i remember you saying recently about the john lennon shirt how you had a Yes! Whitewash it. Like you had to yeah, wash no, it. Yeah, no, we like, put it in tea darkening. bags. We put like a yeah. hundred tea bags in a pot and we put the t shirt in there overnight and it stained it naturally so that John wasn't so white and the t shirt that he had on, which said New York, wasn't so white either. Yeah. Um, so it toned it down because on camera it comes off really blaring and it hurts your mm -hmm. eyes. You can't really look at it. So, uh, yeah, we had to do that to make that T-shirt work. And it was perfect. And then she cut the sleeves, yeah, and put leather on the sleeves instead yeah, of Yeah, it looked dope. Cotton. It was so dope. Thank you yeah. so much. Wow, you noticed that. Yeah, like, wow. and like, how how was that project for you? Because I know that was what almost five year, no, close to five years, oh, a couple years out of in vogue and. Yeah. So into so I did Lucy Pearl first. Yeah, Lucy Pearl. Lucy yeah. Lucy Pearl in ninety nine and two thousand. It was over. It was a one off. Mm -hmm. And then in two thousand two, that album is yeah. what, what I did the solo album. Um, it was different. It was it wasn't what it needed to be because I was on the wrong label. Yeah. And the CEO of the label was caught embezzling money. And um, mm. <laughs> once that happens, everything kind of he was the reason that I got signed to Q Records in the first place. So when the person that signs you or the CEO or whoever brings you in yeah. is gone, usually the compassion or not compassion, but the the love and the energy for the project leaves as well. Yeah, just different, I feel. Yeah, yeah. He was um, he was the one who really wanted me. And the rest of them were like, okay, she's great, but are you sure? And he's like, yeah, she's a star. So he saw something in me that the rest of them didn't so much. And that was okay. As long as he was there, I was good. Yeah. Um, yeah, he had my back. And he really believed in my project. And he had Joey McIntyre as well uh, from New Kids on the Block. So mm -hmm. we were the only two people on the label ever. And it just was the wrong label at the wrong time. Yeah, when I thought it was a dope project. Like, I was so excited, like, to see oh your, I remember God, that video, man. I remember, yeah, like, it oh just, you know what's so crazy? I've been, I've been Thank getting you. into the whole vinyl world now lately. Yes, and are you? One vinyl I'm about, I just ordered is the Envious single. I found oh, it on, like. So wait a minute, you have a, you have a turntable? I'm about to buy one, because I'm about to move into a new apartment, so. You have to, you have yeah, to. Yeah, I want to get. Got one. My yeah, parents I just get... got one. They just got a turntable because I bought them a turntable years ago and they moved and someone mm -hmm. broke the, the uh, arm on the, I was like, okay, I paid for that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, they, um, so now they just got a new turntable and finally they can listen to their vinyl. We've been listening yes. to vinyl. Anytime I go over there, I'm like, oh my God. 
the sound is just so different. I'm so proud uh, of you for getting into that because you weren't even born when vinyl was out. Okay. Yeah, and you know, it's so funny. So Funky Divas, it's like going for hundreds of dollars on eBay. Yes! Like, oh my God. But I found, I found one for 50 bucks. It's getting, actually, it's in the mail now from Russia. That's I found, insane. I think so, it's insane when they charge that much. Cause yeah, because they're, they're not all paying limited me. press. They're not, because they weren't really, because I guess in the 90s and 2000s, vinyls were kind of like, sense of promotional and like it just was, the DJ. yeah they didn't have exactly they didn't have a whole lot of them i have a vinyl this is a vinyl for lucy pearl is it yes yes yeah, yeah I love that's that. vinyl so and then you can see i, I tried to <laughs> I, I could put my hand in there but um, uh -huh. yeah that's vinyl too and yeah, you can see it's, it's promotional uh-huh so it yeah, has a most of them on, on the back say like the barcodes stickered out and says like for promotion only. Exactly, for promotion so, only. I just yeah, wish they so, would pr produce them again for fans of, because I feel like vinyl's just coming back. And it's like you I said, it's, it's different sounding. It, it is different sounding. I mean, it has the scratching and the, and the naturalness of it. When you do a CD, a CD doesn't have that, it's too clean. Yeah, too clean. If you know what I'm saying? And so vinyl, it just has the realness about it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and they did the limited amounts of that because not everybody has a turntable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know it was I mean? different. And I can't wait to get it though. I can't wait to get. The I can't wait to like... get it either. But even the whole process of making vinyl is different than making a CD. The machinery that goes into it, they got to press them, and it's mm -hmm. a big ball of wax, and it spreads they out to this big. It. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, so it's different than a smaller CD. CDs are easier, mechanically wise, mechanical wise, for them to create than it is for a record. But I agree with you. Um, I have the Abbey Road album by the Beatles on, on uh -huh. vinyl. I've got Chicago on vinyl. I got Brenda Russell. I got Rufus Shaka Khan. Every single album they did uh, on vinyl. I mean, I have a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. But couldn't always play it because so now my parents have it. I'm always over there playing, <clears throat> you know, music at their house. Yeah. Um, and I'm so proud of it was you hard. For... Yeah, thank you. I would, like with Funky Diva, it was funny because there's a, I think it's a 20th edition it came out recently but that one's even hard to find but i found like the original because i guess the funky divas logo was originally on the left corner of this album oh man but on the like the limited edition i think 20th anniversary it's in like the top right or so, it's something different i got the original wow. ones I'll sh i'm gonna message you it when i get it in the mail because it's yeah i was so excited like yes oh finally God, getting it. i didn't know that so our our logo was on one side at one point and now it's on another you yeah say? like the the 20 it says like 20th anniversary or wow. something yeah so i'll oh, show you the so difference. yeah they just they just recently came up with a 20 year let me see because it's 30 years now i think yeah i think it's still it's kind of 10 years i think it was the 20 when it was turning 20 originally right, but, then it got, kind of got out of stock again where it's but I heard that now. there's a new one, a new remastered re, uh, re version oh, another of another one. Yeah, exactly. For the 30 year anniversary, they did it again. I'm like, okay, pay me. Where's my yeah. money? Yeah. <laughs> for real? Yeah. They, they never paid for anything. Like it makes no sense. So yeah, but I'm glad to hear that it's the the demand being there is what feels really good. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? That's amazing. Yeah. I'm just I'm grateful for that. Well, I want to ask you too, like the 20th anniversary tour i'm happy i got to see you all and it's, i was Yay! so i got to meet i remember like after you got off stage uh -huh. i got to meet you and cindy and my okay. photo with you came out blurry i i have it still i was like well this oh. is the closest i got i'm like but i'll see i'll see dawn in the future some way somehow i'm like it don't exactly matter. I, yeah. look at you now yeah that right i was so like Yo, crazy. Talk to the dawn. yes but how was the I whole process because I mean, I remember in Chicago, I think he's performed at an outdoor venue somewhere. I okay. forget exactly where, but I mean, the whole crowd, I mean, I was so happy. It was the original <laughs> four and it wasn't five. Because exactly. I was nervous of five and nothing against, nothing against her. It's nothing just, I want her. the original. I, you know, that's like Destiny's Child bringing, no, it's just, it is exactly, what it is. Exactly, right. It, I mean, how was it though? They, like, they had, okay. you know, with Destiny's Child, just to chime in where you're at right now, mm -hmm. they had, when they first replaced their members, it was so early in the game for them that nobody mm -hmm. really knew them. So it was okay exactly. that, um, 
Latavia, bless her heart, and, and Latoya were cut out. It wasn't right. I don't know what happened with them, and I wish them well. Um, Latavia, yeah. Latoya has really done well in her solo career. Mm -hmm. um, and both of them are talented, so I didn't understand why they both didn't have bigger situations going. But um, it, but it was early enough for them that they hadn't really had the hits yet, yeah. that people would miss the other two members. Um, and then uh, yeah, you, your faces were known already. Their faces were their songs yeah. were more known than their faces. They were still branding and exactly feel like getting, getting to know the audience. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And with us, it was um, everybody knew who we were. So it was just bad timing. It wasn't smart on their part. It yeah. didn't make any sense anyway. Like, why are you doing this? It didn't make no sense. I could. Oh I still can't God. understand when that song "Don't Let Go" was. Oh my God! Like that would be the perfect time for you. Wouldn't want no one to leave. Exactly. Thank <laughs> like, you. That would be the time you want to keep everyone in and be like, "Yo, I'm gonna make sure you're you're staying in. I'm staying exactly. in." Exactly. Everybody stays in because everybody made this hit, and Dawn, especially because she's saying the first God. face you see, like you said in the video, is mine. That is yep. just. Oh my God! You're talking about when people don't think. Like, couldn't someone? Have, maybe someone did. Maybe they just didn't listen to each other, but. Oh my God, it just, it just, it was so wrong as well on every level. Like it's hard to forgive people that just do something blatantly hurtful yeah. on purpose to hurt you. We're gonna ostracize her and kick her out of the group and keep Terry. Yeah. You know, it would have been wrong to kick both of us out because there was no reason for kicking me out in the first place. So yeah. unless you have a valid, solid, you know, Dawn is always late or you know, she's, she's like I said, on drugs or something crazy, and she's just not here. She's not accountable. Um, I don't know. I just, yeah. Yeah, or if, you, if you're never saying lead or if you were in the back, I can even see that more than you were, you sang. Like, it's not like you were just like a backup. Or if I had a nasty, and... or a nasty attitude. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Or... And I just didn't want to. I was always uh, missing flights, you know, that costs money because they have to get a new flight and they lost out on the money that you wasted because now they mm -hmm. got to get you a new flight and we can't afford that. Um, or I don't know, just, there's a billion reasons that they could have kicked me out and none of those were the reasons. It was still yeah. to this day, I'm baffled um, and it just wasn't fair. That's no. the thing. If I was the only one to do a solo album, even then, I couldn't have done a solo album without the record label saying that it's okay to do. do. Yeah, because you need approval, 100%. You can't. Exactly. That's but automatically I, when you're in a group. That's. I had a contract as a group. I was a group member in a contract. Mm -hmm. So I was under the Envogue contract. So that means that Dawn Robinson can't just go out and do a solo yeah. album by herself. Without I need permission. permission from yeah. the la exactly, from the label. It's like saying you can leave for the day and you haven't talked to your supervisor. Or your, or your boss, your supervisor, or the manager for the day. You can't mm -hmm. just leave. Because when you no. come back, when you come back, they're handing you your check. Let me see. <laughs> yep. They're going to hand you your check and tell you to stay home. Like, go home. Don't come back yep. here. You left without permission. 100%. It was okay. So the label gave me permission to do a solo album. And they, kept, and they, they gave Terry permission to do the same thing. And she got to stay in the group. And I got kicked out. How the fuck am I supposed to forgive that? Like, that's so difficult. Well, and it just changed the whole, like you said, it changed the whole vibe of the, I mean, it, yes. not, it wasn't what it was. No. And it's something no. against it. I like some songs. I'm not saying that. I'm still of fans. Of course. Oh, my God. When I hear. It's just different. When I hear Right Direction, um, it's so country western and Terry singing and I love it. So it's perfect for her. But I had a part on that as well. And oh. When I get to that part, I turn it off. Yeah. I, I can't, yeah. I can't hear it because I cry. Well, um, and especially because you were a part of it. You, it's not like you got kicked out and they did all new music. Right. They, that was the music you were already part of creating, part of it. recording, that becoming so like weird. how they say uh, when you're in a group or a singer, they become your babies, those songs. Those are yes. like a part That's of you. Right. Yeah. So. And I was, um, you know, in the studio, we laughed and we had a good time. I was none the wiser. Like I told you, the guy was like, honey. Did I say guy? I met um, the person that told me that I was getting kicked out of the group. Uh, um, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they were like, yeah, before they let me know what was going on, I was none the wiser. 
And I was just green and having fun with everybody, just like we always did. And now you guys are telling me that, wait a minute, I'm out the group. Like, I, I can't even wrap my head around it. When we left that day out of the meeting of um, Sydney's, Terry's room, we were at Terry's mm -hmm. room in a hotel. Um, Sylvia Rowan from our label was like, so what are you gonna do? We need to know that nobody has a hidden agenda. And that's when I was like, Terry did a solo album. What do you mean hidden agenda? And it's not hidden, Sylvia, because you gave me permission to yeah. do this solo album. Oh my God, like, why are you sitting here lying right now? I don't even understand this. I was screaming and trying to be heard, but they were like, okay, you need to calm down. And it, the, nobody wanted to listen to me. So I, I called Maxine, I remember the next, oh, so when we left the hotel, we had to go downstairs and get our cars. And Terry, Sylvia Rohn had left before us and we kind of lingered around kind of like, I was out of body and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go down and get my car. Cause we had to go to rehearsal. Yeah. And um, go to the studio, I'm sorry, we were still recording. And I was out of body. I remember, I, I can see myself right now and I'm on the elevator and I'm just looking at the floor. And Maxine said to me, she said, Dawn, are you coming to rehearsal? I mean, are you coming to the studio? And I was like, yeah, Max, I'm coming to the studio. Yes. Like, I guess she thought I was going to be out right then. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be, I have a contract. I, I will get sued if I don't come to the studio. Yes, yeah. I'm coming to the studio. You guys want you have me no choice. You have no choice, really, at that point. I didn't think so, but she knew yeah. that I was out already. I think they had already made up their minds. Um, and when I got to my manager's house, she was like, Dawn, I got a call from the label and they don't want you to come back. And I was like, to hell I won't. I'm going, not only am I going to um, the studio, because it was the next night. Um, not only am I going to the studio, but I'm going to the photo shoot for Don't Let Go, because we had to get our uh, photo shoot for that single. Um, I'm going. Um, unless they tell me for sure that I'm out and there's a contract that says null and that I avoided out of this group, mm -hmm. I'm not leaving. Um, and I was yeah, like, why should we you? Like well, you said, how do we it's fight not this? You. Yeah, exactly. Man. And how do we fight this? Because Terry did not get kicked out, but I'm getting kicked out, and it's not fair. So how do we fight this? And we were trying right. to come. We were trying to come up with some kind of um, scenario, and we couldn't figure it out because it was their word against mine. It was what Sylvia Rohn wanted to do, and she's the label. Yeah, it's not like she was the A and R guy or someone who worked in another department. She is the head bitch in charge, and if she said I'm out, I'm out. Yeah. So, that's, but, like, that's what else I want to ask you too. Like you said about photo shoot, mm -hmm. were there a lot of, cause was that photo shoot ever released? Yes. The, so it, there's a photo with us sitting on the floor and we're all smiling, but we have our eyes closed and I don't okay. want to close because of a bright ass, <laughs> <laughs> bright ass shadow that I have on, but we're laughing, ah, you know, with our <laughs> mouths open and our eyes closed. Um, and that one shot, and then there's a, a shot with all of our hair pulled back and ponytails, and it's really clean. So I had to check it out. I'm gonna look for it. I'm yeah, gonna... there's a shot. With I probably all of maybe us... seen it already, but I wasn't sure. Like, was it was the album work already like shot too, or was that? No, no, that it became. Wasn't. You saw EV3 album cover. They're sitting on a couch. Yeah. And it looks like what they wore in the whatever video, maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was something like the like same kind look. of vibe. Kind of dark, dark, yeah. Makeup, dark eyeshadow. Yeah, but I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was yeah. great because, mm -hmm. again, I'm on that record and um, it was tough to listen to the very first time. Um, I kept turning it off and I think I want to say, uh, Born, I mean, not Born to Sing, um, Don't Let Go is the first single on there. It starts yeah. with Don't Let Go, I think. I think. Uh, and then. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, whew, it was just hard. It was very emotional for me the first time. It took a while for me to actually listen to it all the way through. Um, yeah, I don't think I ever really listened to it consistently. Like the whole thing play one side, but the whole thing play mm -hmm. the other side. Never did that. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I, I don't blame you because that's that's tough. Yeah, that's your. It, it was, was your baby. Hard. It was about to be your new piece of workout. Like, well, that not only that, Nick. It was also we had agreed as sisters that we were going to do something yeah and we had we were tired of not getting paid well we were tired of going into every single project with the same terms mm -hmm. meaning terms meaning our contract we never changed our contract so from born to saying you go in and you get the terms that you're given yeah 
Whatever they give you, you take it because you're brand new and nobody knows who the hell you are and you haven't proven yourself yet. So you take what you can get. And we're like, okay, fine. Nobody knows yeah. us. We're good. We're good. We're happy <laughs> because we're stars and we are coming out to the world. But after you go platinum, you're supposed to go back in, tear up the contract yeah. and change it. And yeah, we never did it. that. You got to check. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, That's you right. were known. You were, man, I mean, exactly. who we didn't know in Vogue? Right. I mean, and y'all you, were mainstream. It wasn't like you were just like in the R&B world or no, in a certain, no, you no, were no. everywhere. Like you were on you every award show, every TV show, every yeah. daytime television show. Nominated like, for seven Grammys, nominated seven times for Grammys, never won, but I don't understand that still. I don't get, I don't get it either. Because people that win today win like seven and they have one album out. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. It gets me mad with. Certain artists like in Vogue, Diana Ross never won a Grammy, Snoop Dogg. I'm just like, how do these legends don't have a Grammy, but exactly. a new artist has a Grammy off of one single. I don't. Right, right. It makes me mad, but I just, I guess a Grammy don't define you, but it's still just. It does, a, though. It does. It, for yeah, because it's just. It that. changes. Well, it changes the perception that the world has of you. It automatically puts you. And it's your like rates when go up, you get to charge more, everything. Exactly. You get to renegotiate a contract for real. Um, yeah. But it's it's the same thing when an actress wins an Oscar. Mm -hmm. Ooh, all of a sudden you are worth a lot more. And 100%. Yeah, so you're looked at, you're booked differently. You yeah. are um, now as an actress, if you win an Oscar, your name becomes headliner on, on a movie. So mm -hmm. you are the first name that people see when the credits roll. Yeah. You know and it always I mean? says Academy Award winner. That's right. That's you know, right. And Grammy so, award winning. Yep. It's always that go. title. Yeah. It's so yeah. yeah, you're right. You get to go in and renegotiate for better terms with that. You get automatically. Um, it just puts you at a certain level. Yeah. That you weren't before. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. So but, I really wish that we could have won. I mean, seven times it's beautiful, but like, come on, you guys couldn't give us one for Don't Let Go, at least? Yeah, like... It would have changed the game for us. And I just don't understand that when they were number one songs. They were... It's not like they were in the right. top 50. Exactly, they were come on. in the top five. They, it was right. number one. They were number exactly. one songs. Number I don't... One. I don't around the world. Around, around the world, not yeah. just in Global. one territory. You, exactly. I mean, it, it blows my mind. It makes me so mad. So I not try to watch... I watch the Grammys, but I get upset a lot because... They're just so different now than I feel yeah. like in the 90s and 2000s. Exactly. It's just different. Yeah. But how Very. was it, though, doing the 20th anniversary tour? How was it getting back with the girls and getting, Maybe like you said, because you still had a lot to hold on to. I mean, it's a lot to still, I give yeah. you a lot of credit for doing it and the four of you doing it. I'm so happy. That's all. Exactly. Oh, like, so you're talking about in 2010. In 2000, yeah, 2010. How how was right. it for you just getting back? Like, how was it just being you know back what? with the girls and on tour? It's very difficult, but I would always hear, especially men would say, don't be emotional. Mm -hmm. Don't be emotional. Um, you know that this can't work without you and they need you. So walk in with your head held high and <laughs> let these bitches know I'm back. Uh-huh. <laughs> But it's also, it's also, there's a lot of love there. And that's what I would walk in with. I would all, I would walk in with the arrogance, but immediately when I saw them, it was like, Sydney! Yeah. Not seeing, you know? Oh my God, Terry, I love you guys. It was always that for me. Um, and it was that from them to me as well. But then the stuff that I would sit there thinking, like, you know, you bitches, like, really kicked me out, right? You, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? You can't help but think that when you're sitting there looking at them like we're talking, but I'm not really talking to you because you kicked me out the group. That's how I felt for you. Like, I gave you so exactly. much. I was like, because Maxine was gone then, I know, at that time, too. But yes, you were was. the original one that was out of the group. And I was just like, dang, well, I gave her left, so much credit. She left by choice. She didn't left because they kicked it's, her out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, she, it was a different situation for her. Right. For you... It was different, and like for you to go back and, like you said, you, you did it. Like you went yeah. in there, you performed like you never left each other. Exactly. Like, I remember seeing you all. I was like, yes, I finally get to see "Don't Let Go" live with Dawn on. Where were we? Where did you see us then? I think you performed at 
in Chicago. I think it was market days. Oh, you said that. We were, had an outdoor in, uh, venue It was or an something? outdoor. Yeah, it was like a stage in a big parking lot, I remember. Right. And you right. came on the side after to meet a couple fan, like fans on the railing. Oh, was, my God. So we met you then. Yep. Yeah. It's, that was the, when I met. And I was like, I got it. I'm like, Dawn's back. I'm like, I need to try to meet oh, Dawn I love and you, see. Nick. Like, that yeah, because so it just sweet. wasn't the same without, I needed the four original. And like I said, it's I nothing you. against anyone else. I love Not everyone. I love everyone's yeah. voice is different, but the original, it's just, it is what it is. It, it's, yeah, you can't, you can't be mad at, I don't even know how other groups do it. Like, um, putting other people in is just so different and it just changes the dynamic. It was different mm -hmm. with New addition made it work, but I still don't feel like Johnny Gill fit in. Yeah. I still see him as a solo artist. He's just, mm -hmm. you know, rub me the right way and put on your red dress. I mean, I don't see him as a part of a group. Um, and I think it's because he's solo minded as well. Like it could yeah. be that, um, but Bobby, Ronnie, Ricky and Mike, it's just, you <laughs> kind of say it and it, it flows, you know what I mean? Yep. So not to take anything away from him. He's amazing, Johnny. But I just don't get it when other people put people in groups. Now, back in the day, groups did that all the time. They replaced yeah. members all the time. So it's not new. But with us, we had made such an impact. And I don't know. To me, a lot of times what happens, I think spiritually, and uh, this isn't even ego talking, but when you do something wrong to, to someone, it comes back on you. Yeah, sooner or later, what goes around comes around. Maybe it really does. five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, but it's gonna Real it's gonna talk. bite you some way yeah. somehow. And yeah, last, so I think the least way you think too. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but that's what I think. I think they didn't win because of that, and I know mm -hmm. that I was stopped from winning because I slighted Sylvia. So anytime I go to a new label, they're like, "Oh, yeah, we love you. We'll sign you." But you know, Sylvia is my best friend. I remember Jimmy Ivan saying that one time and my whole stomach fell. Like I was like, did he just say that you guys are born on, that Sylvia and Rowan and him are born on the same day? I was like, oh, so you guys have known each other for, oh yeah, she's like my sister. And that's when I knew I was doomed. Doomed. Uh, yeah, because he wasn't gonna make sure. everyone that knows everyone in the industry. That's the, the scary that's part. Right. Yeah. Everyone. So, right. But I think with the girls though, I think it's really karma. Um, that prevented them from having the, the huge success they deserved. Yeah, 100%. I don't even know if they deserved it because of what they did to me. So, you know, you treat people, you get what you pay for. Yeah. And the way that they treated me can, kind of came mm -hmm. back on them. That's what I want to ask you too. Like, so you toured for, I think maybe, I think it was like two to three years mm -hmm. uh, worldwide and in the States. What was discussed besides just, was there a lot of things discussed because you, that, you're talking about when I came back in 2009? Yeah, like, was there yeah. stuff on the table? Was there a lot? Or was it more like, we're just touring, and then we're going our separate ways again? The reason that we can't get past what happened with In Vogue is because we never talk about the truth. Oh. The, the elephant sits in the room, and we walk around it, and we, we look, but all oh, can't really go there, because Terry won't admit that she's the one who really divided the group in the first place. It's her boyfriend, her and her man, her, uh, our producer. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever that happens, if you're not solid within your relationship to understand, I love you, I'm in love with you or whatever, you know, we got this thing going with each other, but I still yeah. have to do business. And I still have to have my girls' backs. Yeah. So I have to have Cindy, Terry, Maxine, I mean, I'm sorry, Cindy, Maxine, and Dawn's backs. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't just, you know, walk away from them like they don't matter and that's what she did so we never talk about it because terry will never admit that what she did was the was the problem that was the beginning of it um and that you know none of them talked to me about the fact well dawn you know what we kicked you out and terry did a solo album and we kept her in the group and we're so sorry for that yeah even that would be like oh my god yeah, that's something. Yeah. I would be crying and I would be forgiving and let's just work. But yeah. if you're not going to act like, if you're going to act like what you did to me didn't matter, there's no, like right now, black people want, um, what do they call it? Uh, we want for our, for slavery and all that stuff. We want um, 
There's a word for it. I know they're going to give it to me right now. <laughs> um, we want... Uh, and the Foster Thomas girl was only looking out, looking for three. Initially, they were only looking for three girls. But yeah, um, we want our payback. Oh, there, someone said it. Reparations. Reparations. Thank yeah. you. I knew that, that was. I said. I said reprimanded, but no reparations. <laughs> and we want to be paid. I wanted to be taken care of for that. I wanted the girls to at least just say, "You didn't have to pay me anything. Just tell me you got Dawn. We know that what we did to you was so wrong, on every level. We know that that was just. It had to be. Just own up to it. Just, absolutely. And I mean, just, who it cares? Was, go so on with life. Wrong. Yes, like, go on with life. But um, don't act like it didn't matter. Yeah, because you're acting I, like I didn't matter. And that's I don't not get fair. why you wouldn't want that for you to own up to it. There's so much money on the table to be Thank made. You. And right. there's you just could all be multi, multi millionaires because the fans love, I mean, they want the original four. They want it, it's it. just, it, it, it just when, it is what it this, is. I'm going to add this too, Nick. There's nobody that does it better. No. The four of us together is no fucking joke. It's mm -hmm. no joke. Now, we did that thing with Rona uh, about a, uh, last year. Last I'll, year. I'm just going to tell you, I give you a lot of credit for that. Because when I seen that photo, I was like, <laughs> no. No. Like, yeah. I was just, Thank you. I was like, man, but, Don and Maxine, I, would, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, because but Maxine like a, has... Maxine has nothing to say about it because she's part of the reason that I was kicked out of the group. She was there with the original three doing that as one of the original three doing that. So as much as I love Maxine, she did some dirt back then too that was just as bad. She's one of the parts. She's one of the one of four and I was the one that they were kicking out. Maxine was yeah. sitting there with everybody else and wasn't saying anything, didn't just stand up for me. Now. Exactly. And then when I came back to the group in 2009 and we had those three deals on the table, Sony Warner Brothers and Rough Town Records, Maxine was the main one cursing me out. Why don't you want to sign in Rough Town? I don't understand. Um, have you read the contract? Yeah. Have I'm you fine. read the contract? Because if you read the contract, <laughs> no, I didn't read the contract. Okay, well, then that's why you're in trouble. That's our problem. We as black people don't look it over and read the contract. You got to read the fine uh, print. You have to look at it or else you're going to be in the same predicament that we were in in mm -hmm. 1990 or 89. They see the little money that's there that you'll well, get that's really nothing. And they It'll thought it you. was gonna be that we were um, getting 50,000 a piece. And I was like, it's in the first paragraph that we only <laughs> get 10,000 a piece. That's upon nothing. Signing. And then we get the other 40 if, if the album sells, if, and that's a big if, and it didn't sell. So we're not getting, you know, they didn't get that, that other 40. And Maxine sent me a, a, an email before they even started uh, recording the Rough Town album. She sent me an email and she said, Dawn, you were absolutely right. It was a month after they told me I was stupid for not signing. Um, Dawn, you were absolutely right. Um, this Rough Town deal is crap and we probably have to sue to get out of it. Thank Didn't you. Didn't I tell you guys? <laughs> Did no one listen? Nobody heard yeah. me? That's what happened. That's just so crazy. You think they would have learned by then? This is 20 years. Like all the advice and all the horror stories you've heard years, from years. and you've lived through it so it's like how what yeah i don't it makes me so sick because in hindsight you want to tell me that i was right but you guys could have just listened to me in the first place and just dawn might be right about this and, and the off chance that she might be right can we just think before we actually do this because once we sign the contract we're in it and that's what i tell you too that was so if that would have signed if you would have signed the right contract all four of you that would have been a new album the original four four in vogue yes. in 2010 yes. i would assume exactly yeah oh. it, it was the original four we toured that whole so from yeah. 2009 when they asked me to come back to the group that year prior we had done a, a show called don't forget the lyrics on tv and it's yes, on, yeah, I, on, wayne, on wayne youtube brady. wayne brady yeah. it was fun and I got the most answers. Yes, I did. Yes, I'm popping my collar. Yes, I'm <laughs> okay, because I knew the country western and rock and roll uh, categories, honey. Don't don't mess with me. Yep. Um, and then that next year, they were like, "Well, Dawn, we're talking about touring for this whole year, 2009, leading up to 2010 for our 20 year anniversary. 20 years, yes." <clears throat> and I was like, "Great." 
And they were like, well, and we're not going to have Rona. And I didn't even say anything about it. I was like, I didn't say Rona can't be there. But their idea was we're going to do this without Rona because this is for our fans, not Rona's fans. She's not part of that. Yeah, Initial. it makes sense. Right, right. Doesn't it? It makes sense to me. And so she sat it out for that year. And we toured the States first. Then we went over to Amsterdam, Rotterdam, London, Paris, uh, Cork Island, and Cork Island and Dublin Island. Okay. And then uh, we came back to the stage and toured some more here. And that's when those three deals were presented to us. And I was just like, okay. I told my mom. I said, I called her and I said, well, these are the three deals on the table. And I know they're not going to take Rough Town because Rough Town hasn't proven themselves as a label. It's an independent yeah. label. It's they were small. New. Huh? They were new at that time, right? It they was were like new. just. Yeah, it was new. I remember. It was the guy, uh, it was Renee from Renee and Angela. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so you don't have to cry and um, mm -hmm. beautiful songs that they wrote together, but he didn't have the wherewithal. And like I kept telling him, you guys, he's not, he is not, how am I putting it? Because I don't want to sound mean at all, but I was just like, he's not worthy of, of, you all. An, of an en vogue. Exactly. Yeah. He has never had a group of our caliber to be able to say, I took this artist from. You know, they were successful at first. They were up here on top, and then they fell off, and I brought them back to success again. Yeah, he, he didn't have that title. Back. And he huh? didn't have that title to do that, I feel. No, like, no. you need someone above here that was right with y'all to... Exactly. And, bring, that and it's no disrespect. That's just... Right, not at all. It's just the That's just the way it is. It's just... There's a, there's a scripture in the Bible, and I'm not a Bible person, but I know a few scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. One is, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And I've been saying that over and over before the election. Yeah. But one of the other ones is, do not, do not cast your pearls before swine. Meaning, if you have these beautiful pearls, are you going to give them to the, to the pigs? <laughs> and I'm not saying that he's a pig. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just yeah. saying he didn't deserve an en vogue because he hadn't proven that he was capable of taking us back to the success that we had before. Yeah, and like he you had, said, I, I would have preferred Warner Brothers or Sony because those would have been huge producers. Exactly. That at that time, I feel like that's when a lot of people were working with, like the Neptunes, Dark Child, Timbaland. Yes. Well, we had Dark Child was in the room with us. Nick, he was saying. there at the meeting. He was at yeah. the meeting. With Everyone us experimented before. with them and kind of, and like you said, it was older groups that came back and they had that new sound like i would have loved that for you all just to exactly. hear what they could have done for you all well just to see a different side sometimes i think that they give artists who have been there before they give them they don't give them the sound that is indicative of in vogue yeah and so they would have given us we're not trying to sound like 702 or you know what I mean? We're not trying to sound yeah. like those other groups. We are in vogue and we do a specific thing very well. Our acapellas, that's what we needed. So yeah. I was like, you guys, why don't we have Denny and Tommy? I think Maxine actually um, was the one. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. Again. <laughs> I think Maxine was the one who um, suggested that we have Denny and Tommy because Denny and Tommy gave us our sound. So why don't we have them do produce one song at least on the record like something that yeah. is indicative of our sound with mm -hmm. them that nostalgia then, that what the fans exactly. need at least one like you said one song right and um and then we and then we do the rest of the record with other producers and i was like yeah but our biggest hit didn't come from denny and tommy all right our biggest hit came from um rico organized noise organized noise yeah who did goody mob and um What's the other big gip in them? Goody Mob. That's Goody Mob. Yeah, that was Goody um, yep. So I agree to a certain point if the song is a hit. Don't just put Denny and Tommy on the record because it's Denny and Tommy. Put Denny and Tommy on the record because they're fucking badass and they gave us a hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not with just, oh, it's Denny and Tommy. We love them, so they should be on the record. No. Denny and Tommy have to come through just like everybody else is, that's um, going to give songs for the record. Yeah. But, the girls ended up choosing Rough Town, and literally the phone call that we had was a two-hour phone call. I was sitting outside the bank, and they called me right then, and they were like, uh, so Dawn, you're not going to sign Maxine especially. You're not going to sign Rough Town, blah, blah, blah. I was like, Maxine, because she's from New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> so she's got this little Jersey accent. The Jersey accent. Dawn, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't, you don't want to sign. Uh, I was like, no, Maxine. No, because the contract says that we're only getting ten thousand upon signing, and the other forty if the if 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 the album is successful. So no, 
I just think that the deal that we have on the table with Warner Brothers, there is no deal. I said, but we can write our own ticket with Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. we can, Warner Brothers was offering us the world. Anytime you have a Rodney Jerkins sitting in the meeting with you, yeah. the record company means it. They're not going to waste real. this man's time <laughs> to have him come sit down with us old bags when he could be sitting with Justin Bieber or Justin Timberlake or Brandy or Usher. But he's, he, he sat in our meeting with us to say that he wanted to do our album. And you guys don't think that we have a great deal with Warner Brothers? I, I couldn't. There are certain things in life that I probably will go to my grave not understanding why. Mm -hmm. Taking me out of the group was one. Taking the Rough Town deal was two. And... I don't get that. <laughs> 20 years later, too. Like, why? why? And still, even now, Vince. I mean, Nick, I'm Nick. sorry, Vince. What did I get, Vince? Uh, um, even now, though, they're still stuck on not, not being smart. Like, when we went back to do the charity that I was bringing up a little while ago yeah. last year, oh, my God, the girls should have been like, okay, first of all, we're going to do this reunion with just the four of us. Oh, yeah. Like, that's that. We don't have to explain it. Rona, if you don't there like There should be it, no explaining to say. There, exactly. Just, she should have to fall back. Well, this you was Cindy's thing. thing. Cindy said, Nick, Cindy said, well, Dawn, and it was her and I in the meeting. Um, this was about two months before that charity event. Uh -huh. um, she said, well, Dawn, I understand what you're saying about Rona. And I said, no offense. She hasn't done anything to me. And Max, she's yeah. been very gracious. To, Max was sitting to my right. And I was like, she's been very gracious to us. She's never been nasty. Um, and I've never had anything bad to say about her in the press either. Yeah. However. I think that she needs to sit it out and let us do our thing without her. Like she did in 2010. Yeah. So why is it something different now? Exactly. Like, and Cindy was, Cindy's thing was, well, um, she's been with us for, four, for 13 years. Um, Cindy talks real nasal. So she's been with us for 14, for 13 years. And, um, and I was like, and I said, I said, Cindy, I understand what you're saying, but her harmonies are not the same as ours. Yeah. It's just her different. voice. Her voice doesn't blend with us. She's way taller than all of us. Mm -hmm. You can see it in the picture. She's up here yep. and we're like, you know what I mean? And so she doesn't have our look. She's a nice girl. She's very, she's a sweetheart. She's funny as heck. Her, her and Terry are just like, you can't even breathe because they're laughing so much. It's so funny to be around them. Um, but I just think we need to be able to celebrate our, our 20 year, our 10 years together for our fans and yep. she said well you guys technically really do get it um my battery is dying oh, you're good <laughs> um i understand um but maxine and i helped build the foundation for invoke that she gets to and for the last 20 it's been 22 years since i left the group at that time um she's been able to benefit from all of that and i haven't so I think she needs to sit back and let me and Maxine come in and yeah. celebrate our fans with you and Terry. Um, and they just treated us like work for hire. And I wasn't with it. I couldn't, I couldn't deal. I don't know how you did it because th th that rehearsal uh, had to be awkward. It was, because it's just, it, it, it's someone you're not. You don't understand how awkward. I'm sorry, I got to go over here with the plug. Yeah. But then, oh, you're Nick, you, you understand so much more than most people. And I'm just like shocked that you get it. Yeah, because I'm a music head. Really like, do. I have researched. I, yeah, I'm just a music head like no other. Like, I, if it wasn't for music and just knowing But it's business. not just the music, though. It's not just that. It's that you understand the business part and how yeah. emotionally, but how emotionally I felt having somebody else in a situation where, like, I should have been postal. <laughs> the, only, the only way I could have seen the five of you being together this is just my opinion and it's no offense yeah, if there was like real. after after you were out of the group if they had like 10 number one singles with rona maybe i could understand that right right but that wasn't the case well cindy said again it was her and i talking and cindy said well um you know we did we had a hit with her and we went to number 11 on the charts and i was like cindy that's nice that you do a number of tens, but when Maxine and I are in the group, you, we have number ones. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh, what? <laughs> what? 
it's, it is what it is. Hey, I mean, oh my God. Yeah, I don't play. Like, I tell the truth. I don't care. I'm not trying to help hurt anybody, but we don't do number 11. We don't yeah. do number 10. We do number one. Exactly. That's what we do. So uh, that's cute that you guys had a number top t top 10 or top 11 single. You know, Rocket was a nice song. I really loved it. Yeah, I, did. I did like Rocket. I love the video. I love the song. But I didn't like it, the video as much because I didn't get it. To me, the, the movie that um, Oprah came out with that she was in. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I forget what it's called. That's it's what they too... look like to me. Um, yeah. Like, I thought it was a more like... artistic video. Like, it wasn't really... A storyline, I guess I felt it was just kind of yeah, and that's okay. I don't cool. mind the storyline, but it just yeah. felt like older women to me, and they just wore them gowns on the on the desert. Like I couldn't understand it, but I loved the song. I really yeah. did. I really like the song. Mm -hmm. Um, hundred percent. I, I agree with you. Yeah, to me, I was like, okay, Cindy, number ten is cute, or number eleven is cute, but that's not a number one hit. That's, it's not like number one. <laughs> come on. Come on, that's what that is what it would have happened had all of En Vogue come back together, the original members. Period. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, hold on. You know what's so crazy? And I thought about this, and I was like, hold on. I know you all could hopefully get this right somehow because when I heard they were doing it, I was like, okay, first of all, it should be the original four because I'm just saying it's Vegas. Yes. A Vegas residency. Oh wow. How yeah. I know they're doing well, three. Well, this is crazy. You're going to laugh at this, Nick. But when we literally, when um, Tony Braxton was here in Vegas, she had yeah. her residency at the Flamingo, right? Flamingo, yeah. Exactly. And um, she was getting she was getting ready to leave because it was too much work for her. She had a heart issue. The heart um, issue, yeah. want to. She didn't want to do this anymore, and it was too much work. I think it was two shows a day that they want you to do, not just one. And when we do shows, we sweat from the beginning of the show to the end, and we're doing it in heels. So we were like, oh my God, it's gonna be a lot of work. But they would have put us up um, at the, and we, our manager, or En Vogue's manager at the time, I wanna say it was Brooke Payne, uh, who is Ronnie DeVoe's uncle in New Edition. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so he was managing the girls when I came back to the group, and, um, he said, I can't play the game. I called them and they want me to play the game. And I was like, what game are you talking about? Like, how hard is it? We deserve this. Like, get it right. Like, yes. let's do this. And he couldn't, he couldn't make it happen. So it kind of fell apart. It fell apart. Didn't kind of. Um, again, we couldn't even get into Vegas. Being here over the last five years, I do know that Vegas runs a certain way. And it is the good old boys club. So as far as skin color, it does matter still. It's, it, it matters, and it's unfortunate. But I was just like, oh, my God, four girls with four sets of legs and shimmery, shiny, sequence yeah. dresses. It's Vegas, man. That would yeah, be perfect. Yeah, it's Vegas. Like, it would, I could see you all, the Flamingo, like that stage is perfect with the long runway in the front. Like, Well, it didn't even have to be the Flamingo. If they no, didn't but I'm it, just saying, using it as an example. Like, but if it yeah, was, I get it. it. Exactly. But my thing was, if the Flamingo doesn't want us and they want you to play the game and you – I think money-wise is what he was talking about. They didn't want to pay us as much as what they want us to do the work, but yeah. they didn't want to pay us the money that that work required. Mm -hmm. And I said, so if you can't get bait, if you can't get uh, the flamingo, then go to Caesars. Yeah. Come on, keep moving. Like go to the go to the Planet Hollywood. Go to Luxor. You There's know, so I mean? many. There's so yeah. many theaters in Vegas from. This the is, small ones to the medium ones to the huge. There's so many options. So like, many options. And it's en vogue. It's us four original members. Like someone can, can I need to manage the group because yeah. nobody's hearing me at all. That so, needs to happen. That, exactly. <laughs> Vegas got to happen because Vegas, like, like you said, when the time Tony was there, that's still when I feel artists from the 90s and 2000s were just beginning. Because it was like Celine, it was Tony. And I think like Cher did a couple stints here and there. Stints here as well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who was just here? Um, like my... now you have everyone. You have Britney Spears, yeah. you had Lady Gaga. Oh, but um... See, but they get the big bucks. They get the like 15 million bucks. Yeah. We don't True. get that, unfortunately. So Usher is here right now. I don't know how much he's getting. I know it's a pretty penny because it's Usher. Yeah. So the oh, bigger yeah, the art, mm -hmm. the bigger the hits. I know it sounds crazy because we had huge hits, but we don't get paid as black artists as much as the white artists get, and it's the same stupid oh, yeah. shit, man. All and I think that's the part of, exactly that's the, that's the part that he said they didn't want him 
he couldn't play the game with them. You know, they didn't want to pay us what we deserve. So I think that's the part that fell apart. Uh, yeah. And unfortunately, well, that fell apart for us because I know Tony was getting paid a pretty penny. She wasn't, but she won a Grammy. Yeah, it's different. Like you said, it's a different title when exactly. you have that on your well, resume. It's, it's also the fact that when you win a Grammy, we had fans coming from around the world as well, but they're not going to come to Vegas to see us like they would with Tony because... We crossed over, we were pop, but uh, I can't explain. I, I get what you're explain. saying. It's hard to yeah. put into words. It's just. The, it, it's a bigger yeah. audience when you win a Grammy. You have, yeah. your demographics are different. Um, it just changed, I feel, overnight. Yeah, exactly. Like, once the headline the next day comes, like, and Vogue wins the Grammy, it's just. That's it. And now you so have So many people look at you differently. Well, they're all throwing the money at you. Whatever you want, yeah. at that point, you can call your shots. Mm -hmm. You can call your shot. So with uh, with Tony, she had already sold. I'm sorry, she had already won a Grammy. So hers, her audience would have been different. Yeah, this was different, you know. Well, that got to happen some way, somehow. I don't know when, but that got to happen before 2030. That, that's, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's that for a month or something, a I week, gotta I'll take. I, at that point, Nick, I got to figure out if I want to even be bothered with them. Remember what they did to me. So. True. I got to figure out, you know, my success is has always been contingent upon En Vogue coming yeah. back together. And meaning, anytime I sit down and talk with investors, they're like, oh, so, you know, the girls, like, we love En Vogue. So what's going on with them? We'll, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll put the money behind an En Vogue album, but not be me by myself. It's been really difficult to mm. survive on my own, but I'm proud of myself for having done it all this time. I don't know where God has brought, I keep saying that, like, Father. I've really survived on my own. And yeah. when I call the agencies, for instance, I would call the agencies all the time, like um, Monica Lewick or uh, William Morris or CAA or Endeavor. Uh -huh. And I'm like, uh, Universal, <clears throat> call them and say, you know, I can still work. Like, I'm willing to work. And I can get out there and do the shows that maybe En Vogue is too expensive for. So if, if En Vogue is asking for 25000 a show, I'll take it for ten. Mm -hmm. Or seven, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and they're like, well, we represent the girls, so, hmm. Okay, bye. It was always that. So I, it's hard to not be bitter. It's hard yeah. to not be angry. It's hard to say, oh, that's okay. I forgive you guys. I forgive, but it's hard to forget and, and be around them. Yeah. Because even, I, yeah. Recently, even recently doing that, um, that, that, uh, charity event for cancer it's like okay um maxine and i wanted to i wanted to have somebody in, come in and film us mm -hmm. um maxine and i for our project together and at first their manager said yes and then after a while they was like no and uh the last day of rehearsals um i'm sorry the day of the show i was like well can we just have him film us today yeah so i know he didn't want they didn't want us to film the rehearsals because we were we needed work <laughs> Maxine and I, especially because we haven't been in the group in a long time, we need to. Yeah, get, yeah, get in the back in the groove yeah. of everything. That's oh, not no. overnight. Exactly. We had to get the cobwebs out, and he said, "Okay, I'll find out, and I'll let you know." And I'm still waiting. He never told me yes. He never told me no. Just didn't say anything. So, but why yeah, not? It's one day. Because they don't, they don't treat Maxine and I the fair the, like they treat Rona. They treat Rona like she's been there from day one, and they treat Maxine and I like we're work for hire. I don't get it. I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't get it. And I'm not trying to anymore. I'm tired of trying to understand why. I just pray that someone opens their eyes. I don't care if they do or not, Nick. I'm done. I, I, I'm done. I, can't. I just hope there's something. No, like I have said, to move have... on. I know what you're saying. Like, look, like, okay. I always say this. If... Mm -hmm. If Paul McCartney didn't leave the Beatles, they wouldn't have had Paul McCartney and Wings. If John Lennon didn't leave, um, John, John Lennon didn't leave the Beatles, we wouldn't have had Imagine. One of the biggest, most left the group. You have to leave sometimes. Um, Bobby Brown wouldn't have been yeah. Bobby Brown. My prerogative wouldn't have come out. My tenderoni, all that stuff probably wouldn't have happened. Had he not left the True. group, Ralph Transvan didn't do his part. You have to leave in order to grow. 
and that I is think, true. yeah, I, I, yeah, I think differently when it comes to business. I don't sit and wait. I can Nobody had to tell me Rough Town was not a smart move. You knew already. <laughs> I knew that, and I tried to tell them, and it wasn't until a month later that Maxine sent me an email saying, Dawn, you were absolutely right. I'm going to put that email in my book. I'm going to screenshot it somehow, and I want them to put that as a picture with Maxine saying, Dawn, you were absolutely right. Rough Town is a crap deal, and we probably have to sue to get out of it. I still have that email to this day. Like, I've been put on the back burner because I'm waiting for the girls. and waiting for the girls to make sense of what, for some people, it's just so clear. Mm -hmm. And for them, it takes a long time. Well, we're going to sign the least. We're going to sign the least of the three deals on the table. We got Sony. We have Warner Brothers. Oh, and we got Rough Town. Yeah, we're going to sign that deal. That makes sense. Yeah. Really? Oh. And I get the blame looking like I'm the, uh, the odd girl out. Like Dawn doesn't want to do it. Dawn is the, the difficult one. No. Dawn is smart as shit. But I get treated like I'm not. So for that, I'm tired. I feel like the Shark Tank. For that reason, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, get, I, I give you a lot of credit for everything you've done. And like you said, you've tried to make it better. And I'm happy that you've done it a couple times to so try. Because a lot of people wouldn't even try. Absolutely not. Absolutely a lot of people have said, I'm done with you. And it's no um, bad harm or you wish harm. You just, you're done with it. You're just, that's it. You, you yeah. crossed me once. I think you know. also, like, I have to have success on my own and it wasn't right before like it's never been right for me even with the solo deal that I had it wasn't the right deal and you know the CEO uh, of the company Rob what was his name Alan Rubens I think it was for Q Records embezzling mm -hmm. money it fell apart it just wasn't the right situation and the same thing goes for um, the Lucy Pro project was a little bit different because I trusted Raphael a little too much and didn't look at the contract and do what I needed to do to make sure I was protected because I thought he was going to protect me and he didn't. Yeah. So it kind of looks like Dawn is the odd girl out and she, she, I look like I am the bad person um, instead of the smart one. And it's just because I trusted too much. Yeah. So, um, and then the solo thing I couldn't help that was embezzlement. I didn't know anything about that. That was his thing. So it fell apart on that one. So now I just feel like, okay, with all the wisdom that I have and all of the fans still being there, I'm so grateful. That part alone, yeah. can I tell you, that is so hard for an artist to have fans that still love you after all these years. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Like, it's just beautiful, and I don't take it for granted at all. So putting out my solo album um, after all this time, at this point, much smarter and much more calm because I was angry before. Yeah, I, I don't blame angry. you. I don't blame you at all. I was pissed. I was yeah. so livid. I should have been postal. I was like livid. Like, it was just the unfairness of it just feels like, okay, are you guys serious? So, so yeah, uh, I keep talking about it and reiterating the same being a dead horse, but that's what I feel. Yeah. Terry and I did the same thing, and you guys only held me accountable and not her. <clears throat> How can I not feel that? How am I supposed to yeah. overlook that and act like it was nothing? Yeah, that's hard to. I know a lot of people that would never, <laughs> never. Ever, yeah. Yep. So cross me once. That's it. That's, that's it's just it. a done so deal. So now I have to go back in and put my. I'm gonna do a GoFundMe. I'm sorry, not GoFundMe. Uh, Indiegogo campaign or okay. Kickstarter and raise the money for my solo album. I just started my own label, Stiletto Entertainment, and. Um, and I'm doing my book, my autobiographical book, too. I can't so. wait for that. Oh, my God, Nick. I want you to read it. I want to come back on your show to talk to you because I know. Okay, yes. You, you're fair. I understand. You know, and I've, I've had a lot of great, um, all these interviews that I've done lately are amazing. Like, I really feel good about all of them. Mm -hmm. But I love your point of view because you understand. It's like you were me going through in Vogue and, and being ostracized and kicked out and all yep. the stuff that I forgave them for. And you understand emotionally, I should have been a wreck. Yeah. You know? So I want to see what you think about I the book. I can't wait. Oh well, I want to ask you too. Your birthday's coming up. Yeah. What do you think? Allison and Terry, I would let them back in. The it's not up to them to let me back in the group, you guys. I'm sorry, Nick. Hold on. <laughs> no, Hold you're... on. <laughs> Hold on to your love. Just for a minute. <laughs> it is not up to them to let me back in the group or Cindy back in, or Terry or Maxine. <clears throat> we. If they're not going to treat me fairly, 
-hmm. and or or and and not treat me like work for hire and and uh you know we don't have a say so in things with them um if they're going to call the shots for the whole group and act like we are work for hire then i don't want to be a part of it they have to treat us like we are fair and they're not doing that they have to get rid of rona right now and they're not doing that i'm not saying permanently just for one year mm -hmm. You guys didn't mind going on with, with uh, Rona without us. So why can't you go without Rona for a minute, just for one year, even six months? Just let us celebrate the world, travel overseas, give back to the fans that gave to us, come here to the States, tour the States, and do an En Vogue tour with just the four, and call it the original En Vogue tour. I don't know. Us. If they did that, I would, hey, more than happy to do that, but they're not doing that. They still think they were... And this is the other thing I keep telling people. While Maxine and I are gone, they only have to treat Rona like she is work for hire. In other words, when they get paid for a show, they get pay Rona gets paid work for hire as opposed to an original member. So she's, she's not getting as much as Maxine and I would get. So Cindy and Terry get to pocket that extra money. Oh, Thank you. So that's why they're like, okay. Don't bring them back because they're going to get more money and we have to get come out of pocket to make sure that they get more money. Uh-uh. Because they're getting so, double, basically, rather than the double. four of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And they don't have to think about her opinion as much as they have to think about Maxine and I's opinion. So they don't want it. They don't want it. And that's why okay. they're not going to wake up and say, oh, you know, exactly. No, no EV-5, Alana. No. Is there an <laughs> no. EV-5? Did they care about, they've been touring for 20, I left the group in 97, I came back in 1999, sorry, what was that, uh, 2009 and nice. for one year, and then they went on to tour without me. They went on to tour with Maxine. Did they say, at, at any point did they say, well, you know what, you guys, we need to let Dawn and Maxine make some money too. And let's, you know, let's just do an En Vogue tour with just En Vogue and not do Rona. They went on to make money without us. They didn't care that we weren't there. So why should we care about EB5 after we do an In Vogue album? I'm not trying to do anything with Runa. Yeah. I d well, I'm trying not to be mean, but I don't like her sound with us. I just don't like, I love her voice by itself. I think she's dope as shit. She can sing her ass off. I don't like her sound with us. And why should we be forced to have to listen to, her harmonies are different. They don't, she took Terry's parts when we did the uh, charity event last year. She took Terry's parts, and her and Terry, I should say, they shared a part. But I could hear her, and it didn't sound right to me. It wasn't. It didn't. It didn't have the same blend. I'm not doing it. So, um, yeah, nobody looked out for me and Maxine and said, "Well, why don't we do this? Why don't you guys just do this with, with the girls and make sure they come?" No. So why should I care about having Rona involved? This is just for the fans. It's just for us, and it should just be us. Mm -hmm. And I know this sounds mean. I don't care. It doesn't. It doesn't. At it all. doesn't make good. It doesn't. <laughs> it's just the reality. It's what the fans want. Exactly. It's the true fans. The original fans. Not exactly. there's new fans now. I'm talking about the original sure. Envo fans. Like, exactly. Yeah. The the ones who made us uh sold us twenty eight million records sold. Those people. Yes. All those exactly. number ones. They That's right. The number ones to you all. That's thank you, thank yeah. you, because they don't have that. They haven't sold twenty eight million since they've been with Rona. They've done seven albums without me. Seven. They did EV three. That was with Maxine, Cindy, Terry. They did Masterpiece Theater, which I thought was a brilliant album, but without me, it didn't hit. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They did Soul Flower <laughs> album. They did, I'm sorry, they did an album with Amanda. So that was like a Christmas album. Then they did solo, uh, a Soul Flower album. Uh, then they did, they've done like all these albums. Maybe six. Am I right about that? Because then it was Electric Cafe Electric after. Cafe. Well, that was recent, isn't That's it? That's recent. Yeah, I think it was like six or seven. You're right. Yeah. So the fans yeah. know more than I do because I wasn't keeping up with them. But um, I remember Maxine and I, we were at rehearsal. <laughs> Lucy Pearl was at our first rehearsal and I the one of the band members came in and said oh my god you guys and Vogue is across the parking lot and they're rehearsing too and I was like oh, <laughs> oh, I can't breathe I can't breathe I, uh, I'm, okay. and they were like okay Dawn the girls are outside you got to come in the parking lot and I was like no I can't <laughs> and I looked at them and they looked at me and they were like oh my god we miss you we miss you and Maxine was like Dawn 
who is this on this album cover? And she had the album cover for Masterpiece Theater. And she's like, who the hell is this is supposed to be me? And I was like, I don't know. And she was trying to show me. She's like, I don't know who the hell they thought I was. But they made me the same height as the other girls. I am 4'11". <laughs> and they made me as tall as Cindy. I am not, you know, 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, um, and I was like, Max, yeah, you got to talk to them about that. Because that album cover is terrible. That doesn't look like you at all. And we were, no, they look totally nervous. different. No, totally different. I was nervous. So we were talking nervous. But it was good to see them. But I was like, you guys, we should never have broken up. And oh. Yeah, it's just it's still to this day kills me like this is us you guys it's like even this I love <laughs> this that is photo. When we're on, on the cover of I'm trying I'm sorry trying to uh, get it straight. This is when we're on the uh, on the cover of vibe Cindy was pregnant here and you see me holding her face. <laughs> I, got, I got my hand around her face, you know, right there. That was us. But I was like, no, I'm putting on a beanie with my long gown. I'm going to put on a beanie and rock it out. Because <laughs> I'm feisty like that. I'm always a rock and roll chick. Like, to bring something different. Dawn, you having a gown. I know. And I'm putting on a beanie. I'm going to put on a freaking beanie with this gown. I'm going to show you how In Vogue does it. Okay? Um, it's just, it's really sad that two groups, Lucy Pearl, same thing. Mm -hmm. And it just makes it look like I'm the one who did it. But no, I wasn't. I was trying again to make Lucy Pearl work because that shit was. I love Invoke. I, don't get me wrong. I love Invoke. But Lucy Pearl was the business. Oh, my God. That album to this day, it was just magic. It was. Um, and Vogue was put together. So it was a little more strategic. And, mm -hmm. and Denny told us what to sing in the studio and who was going to sing what and Lucy Pro was just us figuring it out together. You know, it was really a family and um, and it felt that way. And the project feels that way. When I hear it to this day, I'm just like, oh my God, Raphael. His voice makes me cry. I say it all the time and I know it sounds funny, but it does, it just has this thing about it. He has this cry in his voice, this, this tear in his voice that makes me like, oh my God. Uh, it's just beautiful and so I miss that. We were on our way. We were just getting ready to be like, oh my God, around the world. Like everybody was loving Lucy Pearl. And mm -hmm. we were just getting started when the whole thing, it was only supposed to be a one-off anyway. Yeah, it wasn't, I remember you saying that. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be this long lifetime. Well, usually it's typically when you sign a contract, it's seven years or seven albums. Mm -hmm. And this was only supposed to be, um, you know, uh, it was only supposed to be, a one year deal. That was it. So but I was like Yeah, I was confused when Joy came in. I was like I was too what? I was like <laughs> uh, Hold on. I, I was too. I, I was so I I was just like, okay. I Yeah, sure. it was it wasn't, it wasn't the same fit again. Her voice was well, she didn't even record with them, but um I remember reading the first article on their first show in New York. I think it was SOBs because that's where we started our show. So I think it was the same venue in New York. We started typically when you start your tour, you go into like little tiny states like Utah, Nebraska, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, you know, um someplace where people don't really know you. Yeah. <laughs> Work out the kinks in your show. And we started in New York. I was like, you guys. But we were so <laughs> amazing. We were so amazing. It was so brilliant. Um, but they started out at SOBs as well. And, and the interview said, it's 2 a.m. Lucy Pearl just rocked the stage. And the new girl, Joy, or the new member, I'm sorry, the new member, Joy, um, is drunk and looking for the next party to go to. <laughs> drunk? I was, at that point, I was like, okay, you guys went from, you thought you had bad with me? You went to worse after that. Um, it just didn't make any sense because your girl is drunk. Like, yeah. come on, you guys. How are you going to work with that? <laughs> yeah, how are you going to work with that? Um, how are you drunk? First of all, don't you see your blessings here? Like, you're in one of the, the best groups in the world, and you're going to be drunk? Like, yeah, like I said, I wasn't the type to drink and do drugs and all that stuff. I didn't have a reason for them to kick me out. I just couldn't understand it. Yeah. So that's why I look at stuff like this, Nick. I feel like... My law of attraction meant that I I had all of the stuff to learn with all of those groups that I was in, and I'm grateful for all of that work. The great things that I did with those people, oh, my God. 
Cindy, Terry, Maxine, there is nothing like in Vogue. Nothing. Raphael, Ali, I'm sorry, there's nothing like Lucy Pearl. Yeah. Now there's going to be nothing like my solo project. That's how I see okay. it. But I had to get over all the anger, all these years of being angry, pissed off. Nobody could talk to me about them without me cursing them out. There was no lighthearted, let's talk, oh, the girls and all. All the stuff that I'm laughing about and talking about, I love them. There was never that. I did love them, but I was too angry to say it. Yeah. And I can talk about it and be like, okay, all right. You know what? It is what it is. It was what it was. Now I will take my knowledge and my voice and my fan base and go on and do my own thing. Because yeah. I want to tell you, I loved, loved. I only watched, I think there's a few videos on YouTube of it. But your Get Funked performance in London that you oh, did. Yes. Oh my God. That was so dope. Oh. Like everything about it, I loved it. Nick, you are going to laugh again. You bring up stuff, and I'm so glad because I haven't had a chance to tell the world. I had a cold for three weeks before I went to London. I was like, you guys have to bring me there early um, before the show. So they brought me there four days before the show, and I was like, I'm still swollen. When I got off the plane, it was 19 degrees in London. Ugh. So I couldn't get well. I couldn't get better. And I kept, um, my boyfriend kept going to the store, to Whole Foods down the street at the time. The boyfriend, I don't have him now. <laughs> but he was walking down the street and he was trying to get me like hot toddies and, oh, anything that would cure a cold. There's no cure for a cold. Yeah. So yeah. I, um, coughing, I was, my, my vocal cords were inflamed. Mm -hmm. And I could not get well for the show. So the day of, I didn't do sound check. I didn't do rehearsal. Um, I was trying to go to the venue, but I was like, I had to walk. They couldn't drive me because the venue was right there. The hotel's so right close. here. The venue was right there. Yeah. So I couldn't, um, I got to the venue the day of the show and I told the girls, I said, ladies, I don't have a voice. I, I really have no voice. I'm, I'm trying to get better. Um, and they were like, Dawn, we have your back. We've got your back, Dawn. We have you. We love you, Dawn. We have your back. You don't have to worry about anything. I was like, ladies, I'm so sorry, but I may not be able to sing tonight. I can't. I have nothing. They're like, we got your back, Dawn. We got. So what I loved is that the Get Funk band, not only did they sound amazing, but they had um, the, uh, what's his name for the show? For the band, I'm sorry. He's the MD for the band, the music director. Mm -hmm. um, he charted all the music that I was doing. And I was the only one who had three songs. Even though CeCe Pinnison was performing too, I had three songs. So I did uh, Don't Let Go, Rocksteady, and maybe Never Gonna Get It or something. Something. Yeah, I forget. Exactly. And they charted all my music and they had horns. And I, we don't have horns in our music. And Vogue doesn't have horns. Um, but they charted our music, which means that if, a, if an uh, 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 orchestra wanted to play our music, it was charted. Yeah. Ah! I was like, yeah. that was so beautiful. Like it was... It was it such was. an honor to play with them because they were so, I'm sorry, they were so professional. And they were like, Dawn, we got your back. We know all the parts. Usually when I do a show, I have to teach the background singers the mm -hmm. parts. They're like, who's singing this part? And what is that part on? No, you're never going to get it. Like, Ooh, pop. I'm like, you guys don't know that part? Like, come on, I got to teach you that. <laughs> How don't Ooh, you know pop. that? <laughs> it's easy. There's no harmonies in that. Ooh. Oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. But it's not a lot. It's not intricate. It's not yeah. like, now we gotta get it, now we gotta get it, now we gotta get it, now we gotta get it. That part is different, but ooh, bah, easy. And they couldn't do that. So this band had it all. I sat yeah. there and I watched Soundcheck and I was astounded. I was like, wow. But when I got to the show that night, I was like, you know what? I did not come 3,000 miles, 5,000, sorry, overseas on a plane to not sing. I have to do this. Yeah. I gotta sing. So I was like, okay, girls, I'm gonna try this. If I look over at you guys and I'm like, ah, that means I have nothing. And you got to take my parts. And they were like, we got you, Dawn. We got you. I got on that oh, stage and I was it. like, hey, London, what's up, y'all? Hey, y'all, I'm here. <laughs> I am going to sing these songs. And I didn't even tell the audience. Usually that's like, you know, a singer will say, oh, my God, you guys, I'm sick tonight. And I don't have it. I can't sing. I didn't even do that. I wasn't going to take the blame for a cold taking me out. Mm -hmm. So when I hear it, I don't like the way I sound on that show for Get Funked um, because I know I, I can do better. Yeah. Um, and I can hear the raspiness and the um, inflammation on my vocal cords, but the fans don't know it. Some of them are saying, oh. yeah, they, some of them are saying like, yeah, she doesn't sound that great, but she, she gave it her all. You, you know, killed they gave, it. Yeah. I you killed it. Like, 
their perform like just the whole like you said i love the live instrumentation because you don't get that a lot with a lot oh, of exactly. touring acts it's just too much you know it's exactly. a lot of money to have all them people tour so when i see i remember watching it for the first time and just like how they had the full led screen with your name just across isn't that amazing I had it that was picture on my facebook page i'm not taking that, yeah, I'm not doing that, that. it was just a moment it was like, it was that, i felt like a star for real for real yeah but, for real, because that name i hadn't look again i was sitting i'm drinking tea at rehearsal and then i look up and my name is there and chris comes running over my boyfriend at the time comes running he's like dude do you see that do you see that i was like oh my god i do <laughs> i do oh wow you guys and they're like yeah we we're doing it right for you you guys didn't come this far to not get all this yeah oh my god i was just like wow they were real pros real pros yes. so that was I an amazing work. production and i Love tell it. them all the time anytime get funked wants me to come back i will work with them anytime they need anytime. to bring it to the u.s so i'm sorry they need to bring that to the u.s and do oh, they do, they they do. do? yeah okay. oh they know they need to bring it i agree with you they yeah do. they um even the percussion, they had a percussionist that was so badass. He was so amazing. And he played everything that you can think of. And he just enhanced the music. And I was just like looking over him like, oh, my God. Yeah. That part isn't even in the song. And you put it there. Like, that is incredible. Yeah. So yeah. I'm glad you appreciate it as much as me. It was just yes. amazing. Yeah. It was a moment. It was definitely a moment in time i felt like exactly it needs to be done more with artists i feel yeah that vibe it was super dope but free a live yeah. band like that. um it is expensive so a lot of times they have us do track shows and i'm like ah, who wants that you know yeah it's not you, the same we can't, we can't get the same feeling on stage i can't turn around to the drummer and be like yes you're in the pocket mm. oh i like that or the girls singing background like um yes I can't do that with them because there's just a track. Yeah. This feeling so is totally different. different. Totally different. It's, yeah. You just listen to a regular track if it's just listen yeah. to the album track. It's no. Exactly. Everybody needs to just stay home and listen to the record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so different. Yeah. But what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. It's like. Oh, not fine. Can you hear me at all? Oh, now I can hear you. Okay. There you go. Somebody said, um, can you please talk about the Luther Vandross tour? <laughs> oh, my God, you guys, I'm putting it in a book. <laughs> Luther was, he was weird. I got to say, I love Luther. He was a true professional, but he was weird. And um, I think the world knows by now that he was gay. Um, and he didn't like women too much. When he had us sign up for the tour, when we signed up for the tour, um, we signed a contract with him that we couldn't wear red, red, white, black, I'm sorry, red, red, white, bl blue or black, <laughs> red, white, blue or black, the, the, like all the main colors in the world, right? So when we started our show, um, we started getting, and we were in the theater and the round is a round theater, so it's a round stage, and that's what Luther loved, he was, he just loved the round stages. And theater in the round means it's, it turns very slowly. And the fans, after a while, were complaining because he had our whole band on stage. But his band was in the, um, in the pit. So it was only Luther and his two background singers, Lisa Fisher and Ava Cherry, and the guy, I forgot the guy's name. Um, and so it was only four people on the stage with Luther. With us, it was our full band. So some of the some of the audience was like, we're only seeing the back of the drummer, or the back of the guitar player or the back of the keyboard player. Where's info? We can't see the girls. And um, we asked him if we could take our band off and put our band in the pit. He said no. So uh, <laughs> by then we were in the contract and Cindy was pregnant. She didn't want to be on the road in the first place. But um, we decided that we were going to get we were also getting bad write-ups because we didn't have good clothes. So, and Vogue is used to being, you know, we're known for fabulous clothing, fabulous, you know, and um, we, I think in Houston, Texas, <clears throat> we got a, an, uh, an advance from the record company and Cindy and Terry went to the mall and Maxine and I had to do, sorry, Cindy and I had to do, oh, 
It was Cindy. I'm sorry. Cindy and Max, Cindy and Terry went to the mall and they got, um, oh, oh, I think the record company gave them like $50,000 or something crazy like that. And they went to the mall and this mall had everything from Gucci, Prada, Dolce Gabbana, you know what I mean? Uh, D squared, uh, Anna Sui, like any designer you can think of. And they came back with these boots. The boots were leather and they had buckles in the front of the boots from the thigh all the way down to the toe they were they were versace they were mine they were like don't we know that you're the only one that can wear these because they're sexy and you're going to put on some sexy uh, uh fishnets and you're going to wear this leather see-through gorgeous like i was half naked under this thing it was like so <laughs> but we had to bring sex back we had to bring sexy back um, and they knew that I was the only one to be a little more risque than the rest of them. Like, I'll show you a picture. <laughs> <laughs> can you see that? Uh-huh. Yeah. So I was, they were like, Dawn, you're the only one I can wear. So I was like, oh my God, I'm in my element. Heck yeah. And, um, when we, when Luther first saw, cause he didn't want to, oh, that was the other thing. We couldn't wear red, black, white, black, red, or, bl or white, blue, red or black, the main colors. But he said, you also can't have anything on your clothing that has sparkle or shine or anything that grabs the light or brings light to you, you can't wear it. We were like, oh my God. Like <laughs> we wear sequins. Yeah, we wear sequins all day. We sleep in sequins, like come on. And um, and then when we got to, uh, to Florida, I wanna say Miami, he called the police on us because he didn't want us to walk from his, let's see. So if our rooms were side by side, this is our room, this is Luther's room, and the stage is right here. <laughs> he didn't want us to walk out of our room, pass his room and go to the stage. He wanted us to dr have a cart drive us all the way around the venue, through the concession stands, like fans are gonna be at the concession stands when the show starts. And he wanted us to draw, have a driver drive us all the way around to the beginning of the stage and let us walk down the steps through the venue to the stage and start the show that way. He called the police. He called the police. The police got there and they were like, okay, so we thought you guys were tearing the place apart. And we were like, <laughs> no, no. Luther is just upset because we're going to walk past his door to go to the stage. And they were like, so if Luther, if Luther called the police on you, you guys, you know, you can, um, if he has you arrested, you guys can have him arrested for wrongful arrest. Um, because there's, uh, there's like laws in Miami for women that are pregnant. If Cindy was to fall, slip and fall on her way to the stage, um, she, there's stringent laws in, in the city, in the state of my, in the city of Miami, state of Florida for women, pregnant women. We yeah. don't play here. So you guys have all the, um, you know, power in your hands. And we were like, no, we're just going to walk past the stage and we're going to sing Luke, um, Anita Baker songs. Caught up in the rapture of love. So we were singing rapture. Um, no, uh, we were singing something else because we knew he didn't like her. <laughs> he didn't like Anita Baker either. So we messed with him a little bit, but, you know, um, we had a meeting maybe about three weeks after that. And he said, y'all sign this contract. Your manager, because he sat across from us. He said, your manager, you, Dawn, Terry, Cindy, Maxine, your manager had you sign this contract. You signed it. If you don't like the clothes that I told you to wear, then you shouldn't be out here on this tour. And we were like, okay. What? Cindy had to, yeah, Cindy had to come up with an excuse to go home because she was pregnant. She didn't want to be there anyway. So we used her as an excuse to go home. But... That and then crazy. after we walked past his door to go to the stage and sing Rapture and singing all the Anita Baker songs, um, he supposedly came out and sprayed his doorway with some kind of disinfectant or something crazy like that because we walked past his door. You know, when, when you are the artist who is renting the place because you're the headliner, it really is your jurisdiction to have that building is your building. So technically it was his building, but he didn't own it. So the police were like, no, he can't arrest you guys for what? What did you do wrong? And we were like, you know what? If you arrest us and take a picture of that and put it out to the press, it would make him look so stupid for arresting and vote for walking past his door 
that was it's like why can't they walk past your door like why are you so mad, mad at them anyway you want them to take a cart and drive through the venue and and walk to the stage like no that makes no sense no they're not doing that so, yeah that that's one of crazy. my our band made some stickers yeah on behalf of luther and um yeah it was it, it got crazy after a while it was time for us to go home <laughs> That is a, I can't wait for this book. I oh can't wait God. for this book. I know. I like, know, Nick. You, yeah. Like, I can't wait to see, like, what you write and just, like, the unreleased photos I'm sure you'll have in the middle or something. He did. Like, Luther did want to be – they said Luther wanted to be one of us. Um, He did want to be a diva. Um, <laughs> but I just thought, why can't we just be friends? Like, why can't – you wanted us out here. You know, we had dinner at his house before the tour started just to get to know him. He invited us over and he was giving us a tour and showing us all his plaques and his albums and his story of his family and his mom and how she used to feed him all this food, way too much food. So that's why he has a love hate affair with food, getting bigger, getting smaller, getting bigger, getting smaller. And um, we had a great time with him. So I couldn't understand. I think we were getting better write ups after a while and he hated that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Jealousy. Crazy. I know. So silly. I want to ask you, want to close up though, like you, you've had some amazing performances. Like I still like the VMA performance. I like the trumpet awards you did a couple of years ago. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The Alicia Keys one, even though it was short, it was just cool how you were walking down the stairs. It just, exactly. You know, it was just nostalgic and What's one of your favorites of all time that you? I would say I would say that's one of them. Um, I actually have a plaque right here with her. Uh, hold on. Can you see this? Is the light shining? Oh us? yeah. Uh huh. Yep. That's Alicia. Oh, the short Bob. Uh huh. That's me. That's Terry. Am I showing it right? Uh -huh. Terry. There's Maxine. And then Maxine. Yep. And Cindy. Cindy. Um. That was a moment. It was, and if you could see the plaque down here, can you see that? Uh huh. Where it says 2008, um, Alicia Keys. It was 2008? You know, I feel like it was yesterday. I know, right? It feels like just yesterday. Um, she was very gracious with us, and you know, that whole time that we were on stage, um, TLC was on stage and SWV was on stage, that was all her time. And she gave that to us, and that yeah. was to me, that was so gracious and so kind, and she could have used all that time for herself. You know, she had a new album out at that time, so she could have yeah. really did a production. Um, and she just showed us gratitude um, for all the uh, female groups that came along. But I think that's my favorite performance of us live, I would say. Um, there's some great, you know, venues that we've done, smaller venues over the years, mm -hmm. but as far as a big venue or, or award show, I would say that's it. That was it. Now, yeah. Lucy Pearl, we would have great shows every single time. And I can, I, I would hear myself a lot more because I was the only female. Mm -hmm. So Lucy Pearl was a little bit different. And our production was different. Raphael was playing. I could play to him because he was in the group with me as opposed to go, go back to your band member or back to your guitar player and play with them. Raphael was like right there with me. So it just felt different. It was such a great, great group. Great yeah. group. Yeah, a lot of great shows we had. I bet. Yeah, I can't, I just can't wait to see what the future holds for you because I know there's so much after this 2020 yeah, is over. Yes, asking questions. How is In Living Color? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, Nick. I'm getting caught up in these questions. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The fans want to know? Yeah. They want to I mean, know. Oh, my God. So you got to have me. What did you say? I want to say, um, I'm just so excited for like your future. Like like you said, the book, new yes. music. like. Yeah. When, when are you anticipating everything? What, do you have a, a kind of like a layout of year or like month that you want to do stuff? Do you have that plan well, yet? I was trying to go for um, releasing. I don't like that. I was trying to go for uh, releasing my book first quarter. So January, February or March. Um, but I want to do my, um, I just started my label and I wanted to do a GoFundMe, not GoFundMe. I just said that. Kickstarter, Kickstarter. or Indiegogo. Yeah. Um, one of those campaigns to raise the money for the record. Okay. And I didn't want to ask, at first I didn't want to ask the fans, but I felt like, you know what, a lot of other celebrities have done it. 
a lot of politicians, that's how they become politicians because they get yeah. money from other places. So, hey, I need the help and I don't want to go to an investor because they would own too much of my record. I don't want to go to a major label because I've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's too many hands in the pot when it comes to, oh, you should put out this single. Oh, you should do this video. Oh, you should do a duet with this person. Oh, I don't like that song because it has too much guitar. Or this song is too much that because it has too much bass. Or they have too much to say and they don't know anything about music. So I'd rather not go to the majors. I can, I can keep it indie as much as possible on my Stiletto Entertainment label. Yes. Um, and do it that way. Just do it myself. So I wanted to put out my Indiegogo campaign by November 24th, which is my birthday. Yes. But I don't know if that's going to work yet. So it might be more like, if you do it in December, to me, it's selfish because everybody's buying Christmas stuff. Christmas and, gifts. And, yeah. yeah. So, I I got fans would still be up. That would be up a fan's butt though, because all the different oh. rewards you get for that's like. I remember when TLC did it, and they had so many dope things for their fans. Like, yes, exactly. I'm sure people would oh, get yeah, that perks. Yeah, yeah, the the perks. perks really great. Like, they get a copy of my book first, depending on how much they give. They get a copy of the book. Mm -hmm. They get uh, to help me pick a single for the album. So I'd show them three different snippets of songs I, I'm thinking about, and they help me pick the single. They get their name on my album. They get the na their name and their photo on my album as one of the people that helped make this happen, you know? Yeah. Uh, they get, um, what else? What is another perk is like, if I'm in, in their city, anytime I'm in their city on tour, I get to, they get to have dinner with me. They get an hour phone call, a uh, Zoom phone call with me on Zoom. It just depends on what they give. And yeah. I think it's fun. I think yeah, because it's, it's interactive. You didn't have that with fans. I felt like when you were out at the beginning of In Vogue, it, you were like almost hard to get to. Yeah, like, they were. People were just it was seeing you on mail. TV. That's it. Yeah, you it, was, it was fan mail and whatever, yeah, whatever you saw on television. Um, but now it's like the fans are direct. and. I have to give myself credit. I don't see a lot of celebrities talking to fans the way I do. It's really, I reached out to Beyonce. <laughs> I was like, Beyonce, look, this is Dawn. And Vogue is coming back together. This is 2009. We have come back together. We need a hit from you. I think you'd be great to write a hit for us, you know? <clears throat> and didn't hear back. Never got anything back from her. And then um, the Alicia Keys, too, I wanted her to do. Because I think Alicia Keys understands harmonies mm -hmm. she really goes yes. back old school sometimes she goes she has nostalgic songs and i just think she gets it from the 70s the 60s so um i wanted her to write a song for us as well and never heard back and same thing with candy from escape so i pride myself in that talk to yeah them. it's i think it's dope that you interact a lot because like it's yeah. it's the new wave it's it's I hate that, like, you feel so far from an artist. It's like you have no, I don't know, it's just weird. It's so cool when you could talk to an artist. Like, Well, it's fantastic. hard, though, too, though, because I keep telling people I have 46,000 fans on Twitter. I mm -hmm. have 46,000 on Twitter, ten, uh, over 10,000 on Instagram now, and then uh, 5,000. I'm at my limit on on, um, on, I just started a fan page, but on Facebook. Okay. So it's hard to talk to each person because everybody has questions like now. Oh, <laughs> what happened with this? And what happened with that? And why'd you leave? And how's Cindy? What is she like? And, oh, Terry's my favorite. You know, it's like I can't talk to everybody. But I try to say hello and at least thank you so much for following us and all this, these years having this much love for In Vogue and Lucy Pearl. And that's really, the, if then they want to get into So you need music. I got my cousin does music. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, little cousin, my little brother, like, he's a dope-ass uh, producer. He can get, you know, do your whole album. I'm like, okay, send me the tracks. Send me the tracks. Yeah. I can talk to you every single day. So exactly. how are you today, Dawn? How's it going today, Dawn? I'm like, it's fine. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> oh, my God. I just, I just got home from work, and I'm tired, but I love you, and I just want to say hello. I'm like, okay, I'm glad you did. So, so what are you having for dinner? <laughs> um, I gotta go because I'm doing stuff. I have interviews now. I've been doing interviews every single freaking day. Every day. Do you and enjoy them though? Do I do. Oh do my you? God. I'm so grateful for this because I think I told you I'm grateful because I get to tell my story in a way that I couldn't before. 
Yeah. Um, I didn't have the power of the press at my leisure. So now it's like, no, All I could- Artist it. development at that time, I remember. Exactly. Yeah, well, not only that, when you, when you talk to a journalist or you do an interview, they end up putting words in your mouth or saying things that you didn't say and they've had to do a retraction, what they call a retraction mm -hmm. to apologize or to say, our bad, we, we misprinted or misquoted what Miss Robinson said and we apologize for that. But most times when they do an, a retraction, the fans don't get to see that apology. No. That we misspoke or we lied. And it's put behind the scenes. Exactly. We put it's on personally the to your phone or an email. It's not to okay. the public. No, it is to the public, but a lot of times it's in the beginning of the magazine. Yeah, where well, you don't see it. You're not <laughs> looking at that part. Exactly. No. It's hidden. It's like it's right. like blurred lines almost. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they don't want you to see it. So they put it in a strategic place for a reason. Yeah. Um, and so it's their word against yours, and it's hard. So I'm grateful for this time. I'm grateful that you guys want to talk to me this damn much. I have, like, another 50 interviews to do. Like, it's almost getting to December now that I'm booking interviews, sometimes two in a day. It's insane. Well, so I thank you so much. Like, this has been a dream of mine to interview you. Oh, my like, God. I love you, and I love that you love me so much and that you love In Vogue and Lucy Pearl. Um, and like I said, anytime you want me back, when I have projects, just ask me to come on. Yeah, I can't wait to meet you too again. Like we could chop it up. Like in Vegas, if I'm in Vegas ever, I'm gonna hit you. If you're ever in Chicago, let me know. Like yeah, you got it, I sure yes. will. Are you me? I want you to introduce me. If I'm in Chicago, then you introduce me on stage. I will. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna message you about something, possibly yeah. for New Year's Eve. Okay. I'm yeah. gonna message you. Um, about something. I don't want to say it on camera, but all right. Um, yeah, I'm glad. I don't like doing business on. on yeah, exactly. Yeah, but um, have well, a great birthday. Thank you so. I know much. it's quarantine birthday, but hey, you gotta make the best out of it. You know, I, just... a quarantine hasn't bothered me. It's all right. You know, yeah. the world. It was weird, but it, I, I look at it like the reset button for the zero. Like when you zero a, a clock, you zero it out, mm -hmm. and it's back at one again. So next year is going to be even better for all of us. I really believe that. Yes. But yeah. yeah, have a great birthday. Have a great rest of the year. Thank I can't you. wait for everything. And you know, Thanksgiving. Yes, thanks. Oh my God, it's crazy. It's right here. <laughs> it is right. It happened fast too. Yes. It did. <laughs> but thank you so much, Don. I appreciate you. you Stay were healthy. I know you're a guy, but you're still a sweetheart. You're a good person, and I love this interview. I had a great time. Thank you so much. Me too. Thank <laughs> you so much. I appreciate you. So let's stay in touch, though. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Talk soon. Okay. Have a good night. Be you safe. Bye-bye. Okay. Thanks.